Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So we're talking about Rorschach. Uh, it's gonna be Rorschach. <laughs> so one time I met uh, Dave Gibbons, artist of Watchmen, at a Comic Con. Uh, I love his work, especially his writing uh, for Batman vs. Predator. So I brought my Batman vs. Predator poster to be signed. And uh, so I, I presented it to him and he saw it and he, 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 he'd been seeing an ocean of yellow. <laughs> Uh, all day, he sees this stupid rinky-dink poster, which by the way, I ordered on the pretense of it being a Batman vs. Predator poster. It was the size of the comic book. Oh, <laughs> So it's like this tiny little thing. Uh, so I bring it to him, he's like, oh, and he turns to his uh, aide. He goes, look, this is the Batman Predator comic I did with Andy Kubert. And he's, al he's also doing complimentary sketches in sketchbooks. So we talk about Batman vs. Predator for a minute. And then uh, I give him my sketchbook, and he he takes pen, brings it to page, and it goes, "It's gonna be Rorschach." <laughs> and I'm like, "No, that's okay. I like watching him too." Goes, oh, okay, good. <laughs> Proceeds to draw Rorschach because I can do that in five seconds. Yeah. I'm not drawing you. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I'm like, I didn't bring you this to have you. I, like, like, look, I did. Like, waste. I didn't even draw it. Right. He, <laughs> no, I, I, didn't, I didn't draw it. I, I wrote it. I can't draw Predator because I wrote the book. I, I wrote draw, the book. Yeah. I'm not, I, I drew Watchmen. This is written, of course, by Tom King with art by Jorge Fornes with uh, colors by Dave Stewart and lettering by Clayton Coles, or Cowles, however you want to say it. I don't know how. Uh, so, and I mentioned the crediting because everyone is doing 110% on this book. Mm. It is, uh, out of a thing that should not be, it is magnificent. Oh, it's a black label. <laughs> oh, of course it is. It would have been a vertigo, but DC loves and hates themselves. <laughs> And so they're like, here's the new hotness. Fuck Vertigo, Black Label's in. And then in a few years, they'll be like, fuck Black Label. It's more like this black flabbity flu is going to be in. <laughs> and then th this is going to be hardcore porn until the first page of hardcore porn comes in. And they go, what is all this hardcore porn doing in here? You told me to draw that. <laughs> no. Oh, that was marketing. Don't you understand? Like, Jimmy Fallon made fun of me one time at 1230 at night. And so, uh, no. Never again. Not Never Jimmy. again. No. We can show Wonder Woman's boobs, though. That's okay. <laughs> King had an idea for a thing, and then, and then Didier said, "Or you could make a lot of money, and we could do Rorschach." <laughs> and he's like, "No, a thousand times no, I'm not going to do that." And according to King, he claims that uh, they DC just threw a duffel bag of money at him. No, they, well, there's no way they didn't. In addition but to also, that, <laughs> you know, also uh, they had Jorge Fornes on the re retainer, like he was an artist for them, and he was going to go to Marvel, mm. and. King recognized that this dude is awesome. Like that he's a undisputed genius when it comes to his art. Okay. And, and so in an effort to retain Fornes and like add to his ongoing contact list of talented people that have worked with Tom King, he was like, I'll do Rorschach if we keep Fornes. Hmm. Which I buy as like a, 25% element of the story. Mm -hmm. You know, like, <laughs> there's no way you did Rorschach just to keep Fornes. Right. But I admire that you did that, and I'm glad Fornes is on the book because it elevates the book to another level. Mm. I guess the other reason is because, you know, Kaching. And if they're gonna do that, like, do this. Like, if you are going to exploit <laughs> and, like, rob Alan Moore, then at least make it really good. And that's, uh, what was it? King kept referring to it. He doesn't want to do cover songs. Mm, mm -hmm. He wanted to do something new and complimentary. Okay. And uh, he also had seen the Watchmen show from HBO, mm. and that changed his mind. He also approached that show much like I did, where it's like, fuck this show. Show shouldn't exist. Bunch of bullshit. <laughs> I didn't watch it. He loved it, mm. like everyone who saw that show, yeah. and uh, and recognized that the show is not just exploiting it, not just doing it again. It's like, oh, it's an eight hour version of Watchmen instead of a two and a half hour version of Watchmen, yeah. like the movie. But instead, no, it's it's a sequel to Watchmen. It's a continuation of the Watchmen story, but it's really about race and America and stuff like that. Yeah. So he found that fascinating and he, so he wanted to more, more or less, so I think the mental gymnastics he's pulling is he's like, <laughs> well, this is said in that. Right. Like it's not a sequel to Watchmen, it's a compliment to the Watchmen TV show which is a sequel to Watchmen. <laughs> and not a sequel to the Watchmen movie, a sequel to the Watchmen comic book. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. No, it is explicitly a sequel. To what <laughs> happened in the comic, yeah. which, But fine. if you watch the first couple episodes, you wouldn't, you'd be able to say, well, maybe it, it is. is. And yeah. then you're like, oh, oh it, no, is. it is. No, it totally is. <laughs> and, like, I, I guess in this world, you know, whatever. Like, <laughs> 
Well, so as long does, as it's good, is it the same? We'll take like, it. Is it explicitly the same world, or is like well, it they, could be? Oh, this or, is, or are there specific like references to things? There that are, are like, no references okay. for him. He's like for for King's okay. approach and the way that I've read this and I've read it a few times now. It's a supplement to the show. Mm. Like it is, it is in the Watchmen world, mm -hmm. and it can be read alongside the show. Okay, because this book is set in the year 2021, but it could also be read after you read Watchmen. Totally. And that's what DC wants. They're saying like, look. Who cares about that I, show? I get the fact that people love the show, that's great. You know how much money I'm seeing off the show? Eh. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, that's fair. You know how much money I'm seeing off the sales of the <laughs> book? All of it. All of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're not wrong there. So it is, in essence, it's a sequel to Watchmen, but only in as much as it is, you're, you're seeing what the Watchmen universe is like 35 years after Watchmen. Right. But we're not going to pay off like, we're not doomsday clocking this. Mm. Doomsday clock is a sequel to Watchmen. Right. By someone that I don't think likes Watchmen. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I think that Johns wanted to say that Watchmen is antithetical to DC Comics. Right, like, Watchmen is bad. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be venerating it. Look how stupid it well, is. Look at how look at how miserable and angry it is. Yeah. If, only, if only Superman Awful. existed in the Watchmen universe, they wouldn't be so angry. <laughs> and wouldn't it be great if you could see Superman there? That's right. why I'm gonna cross him over. Yeah, and, and I mean like Gary Frank makes it look amazing. It does I do like seeing that because mm. it looks great. Do I fundamentally have a problem with that? Yeah, you'll have to watch our episode of Doomsday Clock <laughs> to find out. It's three and a half hours long. I'll try to keep it short with this one. It is only 12 issues, as is uh, every excellent work by Tom King. Yeah. As it should be. He does well in that format. He really does. Yeah. 85 issues, maybe not so much. <laughs> oh, shots fired. <laughs> the shots that I've taken already. These are, these, yeah. these are reverberations of the same shots I've taken five years ago. But I like to say that this takes place during Tom King's blue period. Because it was 2020. He's unhappy like a lot of Americans at that time uh, <laughs> yeah. for, a, for, for a myriad for reasons uh, perhaps uh, why would that pandemic. be Sal? Oh. Uh, the, the, you know people are this locked inside pandemic book? this pandemic book oh. yeah. yeah it was it was a, the, the pandemic had occurred while the book was already in process oh, okay. Okay. but okay. he's writing it during the lockdowns yeah okay. and uh, okay I thought this may have been you said it came out in 2021 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. So it's like set in 2021 20. okay okay yeah I was figuring, like, if he had this story going on, maybe it was written also in, like, 2018, 2019. Uh, he's, he had ideas for it. I mean, definitely he was approached to, to write this before 2020. And anytime anybody ever says to you, hey, don't think a purple elephant, you're going to think a purple elephant. Hey, uh, write, a, write a fucking Watchmen book. He's going to be like, fuck you, and then immediately think of, like, 17 ideas. Yeah. So there's well. no way this wasn't already germinating before he decided to go ahead and do Rorschach. Uh, so it's set now in the Watchmen universe. Right. And so a couple of things are when carried did over. When Watchmen end? 86. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 85, I think. So yeah, but uh, it does carry over a couple of elements from the show. The, really the only one that matters is that Robert Redford, who was, I think, running for president at the end of Watchmen, had become president by the time the show started. Yes. And that he had served five terms. Yeah. And so in this, it's an election year and Robert Redford is running again. Mm. And this time he's running against Turley. And Turley is the Republican nominee. Mm -hmm. And so those are your two political rivals. You never see Redford, by the way. Redford is just a force that exists in this universe. Okay. Uh, but Turley, you do see. And it's like a backdrop to the story. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's the political theater that's going on while this is happening. Okay. Don't read Doomsday Clock looking for parallels or there's n no. This says that Doomsday Clock is a failure and that nobody cares. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Okay. <laughs> this is the only thing that's acknowledged is, is Watchmen and the show. That's it. Not even before Watchmen. Hmm. Which, all the better. So well, is this canon for Watchmen now? I mean, according to DC, it all was, right? I mean, when they did before Watchmen, like, this is fucking canon. Right. And Alan Moore just grumbled in his magic cave. <laughs> but this can't be. It's a Black Label book. Nothing in Black Label is canon. That's not true. Unless you want it to be. Unless you want it to be. Unless there's money. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's true. Unless well, everyone liked it, and, no. then, and it doesn't hurt anything else. But then Ben, it is. Watchmen is a Black Label book. Slap. <laughs> it is, though. <laughs> yeah. Because there's no Vertigo anymore. Yeah, but there was a Vertigo then. Yeah, but it ain't no more. And now yeah, when you get up your, your black label, when you pick so. up your copy of Watchmen, you will see on the corner it says Black Label. 
Really? Yes. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, what agree. else is it going to be? What else is it going to be? We got to put it in something that exists and is current. Yeah. And Vertigo's fucking dead. Yeah. We couldn't just possibly publish the fucking book as it is yeah, and not put a stupid watermark on it. Fucking label on it. Yep. And we don't want it to say DC because then then children will pick it up. Just right. I have it say DC on the inside of the cover. Yeah. Like, no. No, I need branding. I got to have something on the cover. I I'll bet that I'll bet there's some fucking thing in the document. That says like if if DC doesn't have like a logo on it or anything like that, then Alan Moore can you know show up. <laughs> yeah, and, if we ever forget the label, right? Like, yeah, the rights revert back to him. Uh, and, and Alan Moore was not a, a stranger to that kind of legalese bullshit. <laughs> he was uh, notorious for that. I know that when uh, Joe Quesada ascended to his power in Marvel. Uh, he wanted Alan Moore to come back, and Alan Moore was like, I'll come back under these conditions. And one of them was like, make sure this creator's name is on the cover of this publication. And so they did, they fucking forgot the guy's name, and he's like, well, see, now, there you go. And just immediately welched on the deal. And it's like, and I, for me, I'm like, that's such an oversight, you did that on purpose. You just wanted the news that said, uh, that's a conspiracy theory, <laughs> this book is full of them, yep. uh, so that's how it's tied in. But like, I yeah. believe that like they they set up the deal with Alan Moore to get people talking about it, yeah. and then and the agreement, like he's coming back, yeah. yeah and they didn't want to say or they coming. Didn't, they didn't want to work with Alan Moore right. because of how fucking hard that would be. Yep. So they just wanted to flirt with the idea, get people talking about it, and then say like it was a harmless mistake. He's so unreasonable. Yeah, and then have the publicity of him like, railing against Marvel. Yep. Yeah. No, that's that's what, fucking genius. It is, isn't it? Like that's why I think that's true. Yeah. 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 Well, because that is such a stupid mistake. I only have one condition. One condition, and, and they you didn't get to do work it. With me. Like, well, no, no, that wasn't the single condition. He had a bunch of conditions. Well, yeah, uh, but, but that that's was the one. That's the we, one. That's that, the like, one we all heard about in the news. Yeah, yeah. because it's the one that the one they, they broke. forgot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's that. Maybe there's yeah. like 500 conditions, <laughs> and they meant 499 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, come on, Alan. Nope. We also have to set up the fact that we're bringing fucking Rorschach back. Right. Right. How are we doing that? How are we going to do that? So the he exploded. Right. He, Spoilers for Watchmen. He exploded. <laughs> yeah, I assume Doctor Manhattan can bring him back. Doctor Manhattan that's true. can rearrange himself. Yeah, he yeah, could that's bring true. Him back. He could that's definitely true. bring back Rorschach. Yeah, that's true. And that's the, the the book is constantly playing with your perception of reality mm. and your. Uh, your belief structure and a, a part of you could be tricked into thinking that maybe they brought back Rorschach and the first issue was doing that exactly which is probably why I read the first issue and said fuck this book and I didn't read it for a year because you're like they brought back Rorschach they can't no, he's I, dead I, I, I'm not that much of a fanboy I mean like I have a show with toys on it and everything but like the fact is like I, I read it and I was just like Boring. <laughs> I'm not a nerd. I'm a philistine, and uh, so. I, but legitimately, I was That's like, great. "That I'm like that man. You can't deny that art is great." And how bored I was. And then uh, I literally, I had him on the show, and we were talking, and I, and I was like, "Oh yeah," and Rorschach was super boring, and he was like, "It's out now. It's done. Why don't you read the whole fucking thing before you pass judgment?" And I'm like, "Fair enough." So I did, and I read it like literally a, a few weeks ago, and uh, and I couldn't put it down. Like I read the first issue, I'm like, there it is. That's how boring That's it is. I remember. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I read the second issue, and I'm like, okay, uh oh. <laughs> By issue four, I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> issue seven, it's three in the morning. I got to go to bed, and then I have nightmares about the like existential dread I'm feeling from reading Watchmen, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. And then I read the rest of it, and I'm like, brilliant. Okay, fuck. I got to talk about it on the couch. <laughs> We're gonna make dick and fart jokes about this shit. So the story opens with 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 fucking six shots being fired and Rorschach's face exploding. Yeah. Rorschach is fucking dead. Again. 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 <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the opening of A Christmas Carol. Jacob Marley was dead to begin with. This must be distinctly <laughs> understood or nothing wonderful can happen from this story. Then you see that he was blown away on a catwalk over Turley's campaign. Mm -hmm. Like a big campaign party. Rally? Thank you. <laughs> is this like halfway through or were they like, yay, we won? No, they did not win. Well, you're not. I'm. I remember reading this and being like, "Did he win?" But no, no, Turley yeah, did not win. But that's a, a lot of balloons election. to it's a not win. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, yeah. you haven't watched a lot of campaign rallies, have you? These people <laughs> love to celebrate like the most minor achievement. But uh, but he, I think it's more like he secured the nomination. Like, yeah, maybe is, he won the primary. I think that's or what whatever. it is. Yeah, yeah but yeah. yeah. So above Turley's rally, Rorschach and his accomplice, who looks like Annie Oakley, like <laughs> a little cowboy girl, yeah. ha have been assassinated. And there's a sniper rifle along the time. Yeah. The book is full of little stuff you gotta look for. I'm not gonna point it all out. Right. This book is 
dense. This book is dense Every so much. Every page is just so dense. It really does. It so really it looks is. like they were the assassins. Yes. Because they're up there and they have a gun. And, and they then, straight up are. Yeah. They were there okay. to assassinate Turley. Like, the, and, the only thing we missed is having all of these people on the bottom create a little Rorschach face. Right. Well, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't Maybe be surprised there. if let's, there let's, isn't let's... a Rorschach face. Because yeah, like if you wear glasses that like turn the red and blue into black oh and white. Oh, my God. I wouldn't, but I wouldn't put it past Dave Stewart to do that. But there, there's, yeah, no, there, there's hidden fingerprints. I, I, I just recently decided to start looking at what the Rorsch, because there's, there's multiple Rorschachs in this book, not unlike the show. Right. And uh, the masks are static, store-bought, Chinese-made co costume masks, mm -hmm. so they don't move, so they're the same image. Okay. So then I'm thinking about like which characters are wearing a Rorschach mask and what the Rorschach might look like on their face. I only just today was like, oh, I should probably look at what they might look like. Fuck, no, we're not doing that. Because <laughs> you right. get so deep in the weeds. Because there's also like, this is a this is a book that is also made to homage, like the, the, the deeper undercurrents of this book are about comic books. But the like, the set dressing, not unlike how Supergirl is just true grit, is th these are movies. This is all the president's men. You know, this is, there, there are noir films that like, Three people saw from 1960 in here. <laughs> you know, like the, 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 our main character has no name, but looks suspiciously like Mark Ruffalo from when, like, from his detective movie. Like, oh. th there's there's a lot of like movie references and homages and influences in this movie in, in this book. <laughs> so you're just like, yeah, okay. But I I think that the all the presidents men thing is very apt because Robert Redford is in it. He's right. the president. Yeah. Right. But uh, but also they like to point out like. There are a bunch of noir movies that are also referenced, which King pointed out like directly to me. He's like, "Oh, there's these are also important, and 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 why?" And like, there's Ugh. a character uh, named Laura, and she is the main, more or less the second main character of the story, and mm -hmm. she her character's name is from a movie about, you know, oh, God. about that. How would you ever figure that out? Uh, oh, the movie is Laura. Yeah, from 1944. Oh, okay, well then There's maybe. another movie, Gun Crazy and the Parallax View. It's like... Parallax? Yeah, but no, yeah. not that Parallax. This is from 1974. But yeah, so anyway, there's a lot of movie references in here too. Okay. You know, or influences, That's I should say. Fun. But uh, yeah, so uh, our, our protagonist is the detective who never gets a name. The unnamed detective. Unnamed detective. Why does he have no name? He's just detective. Because, you know. He could be anyone. Because he can be anybody, because, like, just like a Rorschach test could be anybody. Mm, or anything. anything. So, uh, I'm, I'm making faces like that's stupid, but actually, it's, like, actually kind of brilliant. But anyway. <laughs> uh, so, the detective is brought in by the Turley campaign, because, like, they just killed these assassins in right. superhero who costumes. Hired who hired them, where yeah. they come from. Yeah. And, uh, and they don't trust Redford. Right. Because okay. they're his opponent. Like, they're not unconvinced that Redford might not have sent yeah. these people. Right. This is like the fifth year he's running. Exactly. He yeah. should not be president anymore. <laughs> right. Because of shit like this that he is still president. Right. Or may maybe. Or could have like, been. This could yeah. be the smoking gun. Yeah. So uh, the, he's hired to bring to, to come in, and, uh, and Redford has given them authority to bring in this outside person. Okay. You know, and, they, and they've sent a FBI liaison to meet with the detective to look at the autopsy reports for these for these two people. And he's a detective from a police department or he's some kind of freelance detective. He's a freelance detective. He's like a it's he's like, like a an, private eye. He's detective. like a private eye. Yeah. Oh, it's like okay. a, he's like a noir hard-boiled detective. Oh. You know, we don't have we get like maybe one piece of personal information about this character. I'm right. just after the truth. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, he's not like Corrupt. Yeah, like so. he's not gonna stop until he finds the truth. It's gonna be dangerous. Yes, people are gonna threaten him, <laughs> and he's like, "I don't care. I have to solve the case." Exactly. Exactly. So uh, he's brought in. He's got his point man, who's who works directly with the Turley campaign, who got the call while he was watching the floor that there were two armed, costumed assailants on the catwalk with a sniper rifle, ready to assassinate Turley. Mm -hmm. and so he sent. He he assumed they were cranks. And he sent the, but he, but he sent the security detail to go check it out. And obviously they were successful because we just saw it. Right. But uh, so the detective goes to meet with the FBI agent, and they take a look at like the bodies now because the uh, the overzealous security agent who assassinated well both of them, but mostly uh, Rorschach, uh, shot him in the face. It's gonna be hard to identify him. So mm -hmm. they checked his fingerprints, and there's no ID, and they can't really find anything. Mm. Uh, they sent it away. They're trying to figure it out. Uh, meanwhile, the fingerprints. Yeah. Fingerprints. 
Fing figure oh, fingerprints. fingerprints. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but they sent them back and they're they're getting information and uh, and and they did you know they're they're going over the bodies and they find that like the young lady Laura who we'll find out Laura Cummings is she had been shot previously recently but not as recently as the time when she was shot and killed yeah she was it was healing yes and uh, whoever shot her uh, or and the wound from which she was shot earlier was dressed by an amateur. And then we see like a flashback to her taking a bullet in the arm in a house, and then someone over her while she's uh, while she's conscious digging out the bullet and, and and dressing it. Right. So they look through their stuff and they find you know their costumes and in their pocket is a tape, and they're not sure what's on the tape yet because they need something to play the tape. I'm sorry, this is 2021. Yeah. And there's a tape. Yeah, that's why they can't play it right now because mm. there's a tape, and they're like, oh. fuck. Okay. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> if you put stuff on tape, it's high security. Yeah, no one knows how to exactly. Play it. Oh shit! It's on VHS. <laughs> oh crap! Get in my 1995 Honda Civic. Yeah. <laughs> Click. Well, does anybody have a uh, American public school? I'm sure there'll be a VCR somewhere in the AV department. <laughs> so you could go to your local library. Hey, there we go. Da -da -da -da. No. <laughs> so it's not clear that this person who was dressed as Rorschach even subscribes to any sort of ideology. Maybe they just liked the costume. Right. We don't, we don't know anything about them. Yeah. Uh, okay. But we do know about Laura Cummings. And we, we don't know much, but we know who she was, or at least what her name was, and we're mm. looking into it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the detective then goes to inter interrogate uh, one of the security forces who was shot by Rorschach uh. beforehand. It's, just a, it's a fun sequence that just reveals Rorschach. Right. And of course, what does Rorschach say but Herm? That's, <laughs> that's his trademark signature line. Uh, but then a wall was blown out to get to Rorschach and the kid, as Laura Cummings will be known as throughout the book. Uh, why was there so much force being done if they thought it was a crank in the first place? So there's mm. already holes in these stories that the detective notices. Uh, detective gets a call about the tape. We heard that we, we've listened to the tape. It's kind of fucked up and weird. Uh, meanwhile, at this time in 2021, a, uh, a prominent and classic comic book series, Pontius Pirate, is being adapted into yet another major motion picture. They're still doing pirate comics. Uh, well, some would say they're still doing superhero comics. Yeah. That's, the, that's the thing, right? <laughs> but yes, uh, and we'll get into Pontius Pirate in a second. But, okay. uh, but Pontius oh, Pirate was a classic 1960s swashbuckling pirate character created by a beloved but reclusive comic book creator. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the tape? Yes. This is a reel-to-reel -reel tape, <laughs> not like a cassette. That's no. correct. The tape is a recorded seance at a comic book creator's house named Otto Binder, who is a real person. Huh. Okay. And we'll talk about Otto Binder in a little while, but Otto uh. Binder's like, we're here in Chestertown, New York, and we're here to talk to my, my, my daughter, now past, and everyone around the room proceeds to introduce themselves, and the idea is they're having a seance to talk to, their, to, talk to the spirit man, who they think is Mr. Dr. Manhattan, uh, uh, to try okay. and send uh, news or word from their beloved lost one. So the idea here is- uh, That's in actually an interesting concept because like since he exists all over time- Yeah, like, it's time not is nothing plausible. To him, yeah. But well, he'd have to be in that spot. Well, he left, you know, and he's sending, he, he's sending waves and information back. We'll talk about like people's belief structures and why, what they think about reality in a post Watchmen world in a minute. And that's yeah. why I think this is actually like valuable because it's like, it, it shows you that world but says something new instead of just being like, oh cool, you know, Dr. Manhattan made boobastuses and now they're like all over the place. No, it's, there's something here. <laughs> they play this tape, they have a reel to reel and they would have their seance and they call out to the people they're trying to reach on the other side and then they just let the tape record Mm. the silence right. and then they play the tape back and listen to the noise right. that was recorded and maybe hear something and the way King is writing it that is in, an, in effect an audio Rorschach test hmm. the sound right. and you make, what do you hear what do you in hear the in the static noise and, and, yeah in the white yeah. noise yeah. so uh, we hear yeah. a couple of names uh, of, of people of Randy Cox and Frank Miller and Will Myers yeah yeah, and yeah. you're like, Frank Miller, oh my God. <laughs> and then Will Myerson, and, and we don't hear who he wants to talk to or anything, but Will Myerson is the creator of Pontius Pirate. And okay. Will Myerson is also an analog for Steve Ditko, the creator of Spider-Man. Mm. And the question, 
thought to be the impetus behind Rorschach, but in fact, well, no. Okay, so Steve Ditko creates Mr. A, who is basically the question, but he has like a, like a, like a metal mask, a more hardcore version of the question who embodies Steve Ditko's objectivist politics. Oh yeah, I've heard that. Because this, Steve yeah. Ditko, the prominent comic book creator himself, was a big subscriber of Ayn Rand, and uh, and and believed wholeheartedly in objectivist ideals. That being that, like, there is an elite, select group of people out there. Pe people are exceptional, and those exceptional people are often misheard or unheard or un uh, uh, not uh, appreciated. And I actually liken that to Spider-Man a little bit, because mm. especially in the beginning, you know, Spider-Man. Oh well, yeah, they decry him as a villain. Wealth and fame, he's ignored. You know, like they don't they don't uh, uh, acknowledge his specialness. Right. And in fact, there's actually one issue that like I think they, Ditko either wrote or had more influence over where like Peter Parker yells at hippies. <laughs> you know, because they're ruining everything. <laughs> but Stan, Smile and Stanley is like, uh, I'm a hippie. <laughs> listen, Steve, I'm, no, he's not a hippie. No. Hippies, hippies don't make money like Lee does. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're trying to sell some comic books here, Steve. Come on. Come on. I appreciate your drawing, but maybe uh, dial it back. <laughs> Oh, so Mr. A was like a hardcore version of the question, and then he invented the question to sell Mr. A because he needed to deal with the Comics Code Authority, and uh, he couldn't say all the shit that Mr. A was saying. Right. So the question is, so Mr. A begets the question, who begets Rorschach? Okay. That's just, but, uh, but in this comic, Will Meyerson is the stand-in for Steve Ditko, who invented Pontius Pirate, who is basically Spider-Man. Like the, the pirate Spider-Man. Right. And by that, I... Uh, wait, did all that happen in this universe too? Well, I don't know. Who do you think I know everything about everything? And it's true, like that's, that's how it is where it's like, okay, so like, I don't think it's a one-to-one, -one, but there is also a beautifully recreated cover that is exactly the... Okay, so, all right. Just, <laughs> Steve Ditko's a writer and an artist, but he drew the Spider-Man books, but also uh, on Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, Jack Kirby drew the iconic image of Spider-Man swinging you know, but in this comic book, they recreate that as Pontius Pirate swinging on a rope on a pirate ship. Mm. Yeah. But like, that's Jack Kirby's art, but it's Steve Ditko's analog drawing it, so like, ah. <laughs> and that's what happens, you know, when you try to do that, man. Fuck. <laughs> but anyway. No, somebody else drew that, it's fine. Yeah, well, and, but and then it's Jack Kirby, and then you're like, but if you want it to be Steve Ditko, shouldn't it be Steve Ditko's art? You know, nah. is there is Dude, there a just call for band. Or, but is there a Watchmen version of Jack Kirby and what is he doing? <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. Uh, is, is there a Watchmen version of Frank Miller? Yeah, it's Frank Miller. It's Frank Miller. Yeah, he's, right. yes. yeah, he's calling into this uh, seance it's or whatever. It's very true. So the detective goes to his like, you know, dingy hotel where he's awaiting his calls and he gets information about like who the the foiled assassins are and they get uh, they get their information after he listens to the tape. Yeah. that they had on their person about like the seance that Will Meyerson, who is a stand-in for Steve Ditko, was at for Otto Binder, who is a real person who made comic books. But they think that Rorschach was Will Meyerson. Then you get into the differences between Steve Ditko and Will Meyerson because in this, Tom King wants to explore the idea that since Rorschach was actually Alan Moore making fun of Steve Ditko's politics mm -hmm. by having, okay, so the idea here is that Rorschach in Watchmen, you know, he was an objectivist. He's like, there's no moral gray, it's black and white. I firmly right. believe in my, what I do and the exceptional people should be in charge. Uh, and Alan Moore believes that if you actually subscribe to Randy in politics, then you are also gonna be an asshole and smell bad <laughs> and be a, like a big fucking nerd. Yeah. And like you're supposed to be undesirable, but of course, because Rorschach is iconic, he also ended up being like the totem for the book mm -hmm. and the media empire that it would spawn. So like you can't demonize Rorschach too much in the public yeah. media. But so Moore wants to make fun of Ditko's politics and who the question was through Rorschach. Yeah. But in this, if we're going to do Meyerson as Ditko, what if we went another direction? So instead of being an advocate of Ayn Rand, he then explored other female German-born philosophers of that time that Ayn Rand came from. Okay. And came up with Hannah Arendt who was a Holocaust survivor, who was on the exact opposite spectrum of Ayn oh, Rand, okay. who believed in citizenry and the idea that like, we, huh. you know, of, of the responsibilities of a citizen of America 
and how we owe it to each other to support each other. It, it's just, so instead of him being a dogmatic objectivist, he is the opposite of that, thanks to the philosophical teachings of Hannah Arendt. Right. The, this was the original Rorschach or the Rorschach that was just killed? The, the Rorschach that, just that was just killed. The real Rorschach exists and he's inspired by Steve Ditko. Well then, the in-universe Watchmen version of Steve Ditko is Will Myerson and he is the opposite of a Randian. But... Wait, they couldn't get fingerprints off him. No, they, they, they did get, well, they sent what they could get off to the lab. Yeah. And what they got back was Walter Kovacs' fingerprints. <laughs> uh... What? <laughs> yeah. But he's dead. And they're like, we, okay, so. But that's Rorschach. Yes. Walter Kovacs, when he was arrested and sent to Sing Sing in Watchmen, they got his prints. And I remember there was actually a fire and the prison was destroyed, but like they thought that the fingerprints were, that any trace of Kovacs was destroyed in the fire, but a collector bribed someone during that time. So he actually does kind of fuck with Watchmen a little bit. Yeah. And the fingerprints of Walter Kovacs, AKA the real Rorschach were sent to this collector. And they dug them up and matched them? Yes. How, oh. how would a collector get that? He bribed the guard. No, no, I'm talking about how would a collector then be able to like have their files out in the open? No, they no, got no, no, the no. collector, they got the prints from the collector and yes. put it in their files and that's what they matched That's against. right. Oh, yeah. they got the prints from the collector. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Yeah, the collectors. Well, that, yes. I assume the collector's just like, no, I have these in their mind. Well, it was worth that. a lot of money. That's how it started, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that was a while ago. Mm -hmm. And that's how they, that's their explanation for why the prints were saved from the fire. Yes. Because the collector had had procured them 35 procured years them, ago. And that's why they still exist. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So they're like, well, it's 2020, Walter Kovacs is dead. And you're like, oh, is he? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, that's definitely Will Myerson. So the detective goes to Myerson's former apartment and studio and proceeds to go into a whole story about who Will Myerson was. He was reclusive, he was awkward, he was uncomfortable. You know, he didn't talk to many people when he was younger. He met and went on one date with this young lady. He was really awkward about it. There's, an, there's a devastating conversation in which <laughs> she rejects his advances and then he immediately rec like recedes into himself. Uh -huh. Well, then she's very shortly thereafter hooks up with this dude who's more of like a jock. And he finds out about their one-time date uh -huh. and proceeds to Raz him for the rest of their natural lives. Oh my god. And yeah, you see them getting like older. Getting older and he's constantly, like, they're in their like 70s and he's like, hey, see you later, Will. Uh, and Will's just getting more and more miserable and disgruntled. Oh my god. And So uh, Will never found anyone else after that one bad date. That's right. Jesus Christ. I know. Well, he's I a know. recluse. Yeah. So. He writes comics. <laughs> he's yeah. a fucking nerd. <laughs> I don't think that's necessarily what they're trying to say, but it's certainly what the... What, what, yeah, what Alma what Adler's there. boyfriend husband would think. Right. Yeah. And what he ends up drawing is like the first page of his real comic book. Pirate stuff is for kids. Right. But there's something real about superheroes. Okay. And so the, like so pirates stuff. are a joke yeah. because they don't exist anymore. Yeah. But the superheroes did exist and were very recent. So yes. now like, now I'm really telling something. Yeah, I'm talking about something that really happened. Or I'm trying, I'm trying to use real analogs to tell an important story. Mm -hmm. And so he invents the citizen, and the citizen's just the question, or Mr. A, but right. in the opposite way. Right. And so he meets the unthinker who is like this baboon man in a fascist <laughs> Nazi costume wearing a helmet that says 14B on it. And the detective's like, 14B, huh? Goes to apartment 14B, meets this nice young man who was, mm. who was just recently moved into this apartment. And he okay. traded with an older lady and he's like, no, wait a minute. The old lady. The old lady. So, and then he goes and checks like the, he looks, as he's walking around, you know, he's like, who would like, he's like, oh yeah, the old lady, like when her husband died, she didn't want to live here anymore. So she traded apartments with me. I just made it more comfortable for her. And he's, and he checks the, the, like the lock, like the sliding lock, mm -hmm. and sees that there's no scuffs on it for years of use. Mm. Instead, it's brand effing brand new. new lock. And he's like, okay, bye. Then goes back to the old lady and he shows her the autopsy photo of Laura Cummings. And he's like, you know who this young woman is. Mm. You met her. How did your husband die? Hmm. And she immediately is like, nah. And while we're finding out about this, we all see a flashback that she theoretically explains to the detective that uh, there was an altercation between the husband and Meyerson. 
and the husband beat the shit out of Meyerson. <laughs> then we cut to a little later, Kay. more recently, Rorschach kicks in the door with the kid. The kid points her gun at the old lady. Mm -hmm. Meyerson as Rorschach just stands over him and he has a heart attack and dies. Oh. <laughs> and the kid is like, if you come anywhere near us or if you call the cops, I will shoot you in the face. Okay. Kid couldn't be any, any more than 19 years old. Mm. So he dies. She says, there, you feel any better? Huh. Rorschach says, need to save the world wasting time. They both leave and she says, if you tell anybody about this, I'll shoot you in the face. Bang. Right. Meyerson was definitely Rorschach. He shacked up with the kid and they and, and they this is not the first time they've killed anybody. Hmm. But also now the woman is safe to tell her story because she can't be shot in the face. Exactly. Like she, yeah, because he says, like, this is this is the girl you met, she's dead. Will Meyerson's dead too. Oh, okay. Like, well, you're fine. Case, yeah. Uh, also, there's a... There's and that was when you were like, fuck this book, this is boring. That was the second issue. Oh, that was the second issue, okay. <laughs> no, if, I, if that were the first issue, I'd be like, well, <laughs> no, the first issue was Walter Kovacs's fingerprints oh. work. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. By the way, I, I also like it because, of course, Steve Ditko uh, famously lived in New York City up until his passing. Uh -huh. uh, and so it is with Will Meyerson. New York City, of course, was the site of a major alien invasion in the Watchmen universe, in which a giant squid monster killed half the half of Midtown yeah. with a psychic attack. And as a result, New York City is no longer the city that never sleeps. New York City is quiet. Hmm. New York City is like a very depressed place where I'm not surprised. Not a lot half of action. Population takes place. died in that city <laughs> but 35 years ago. You know, it's like. Move yeah, on. It could have repopulated, but, but it was did the, it in a different way. Well, and it was the site of the the biggest tragedy in world history because, right. like, this is the thing that unites all of humanity. Right. And, you know, it takes off the brink of nuclear war. Yeah. But I like that that detail. The kid is looking at us, and she proceeds to tell us a story about what happened in uh, Hannah, Wyoming, in like 1903 where uh, there's this mine and a bunch of people got killed in it. But uh, all of this is being transcribed in a book or a, a diary, so to speak, that Laura was keeping, that the detective already recovered when he went to Hannah, Wyoming, because that he, knew, he knew that's where she was from. Yeah. So Laura is talking to the detective through her words, but through the pictures that we're looking at in the comic book. Okay. Laura's father tended the gravesite of those passed from the mine. Oh yeah, that's a very deep connection that she has to those miners. Well, I mean, if it's if it's <laughs> you'll a see why in a minute. historic uh, okay. thing that happened in the town. Yes, and it really impacts that area. Well, yeah, it's understandable. And it kept happening. Wait, what? Oh, like in 1903, 234 fucking people died, and they didn't close the mine. Uh. And then in 1908, like 100 and some odd people died, and actually, Tom King's grandfather is from Hannah, Wyoming, and that really happened. Oh wow! And I was like, what? That's neat. The detective is reading this journal at this like down home country diner in Hannah, Wyoming, and mm -hmm. uh, there's no one in it except for the waitress who just brings him coffee, and she, hey, like you work for the Turley campaign. Like, you, I just want you to know, like we're all rooting for him. Mm. We gotta get that Redford out of here because he's ruining everything, and he's here too long. <laughs> right. and, uh, and, and you know, whatever you need. Like, you know, I'll bring you, I, we brewed you a whole new cup of coffee, like a whole new pot of coffee for you. Okay. But uh, then we meet Laura's father, and Laura's father was basically like, the, the government created a federal job, which was to keep up the graves of these people who had no family. Mm. That's nice. Yeah, and Laura's father did that. Yeah, job. but the government also uh, kept the mine open. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they, it wasn't like a federal mine, but it, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> didn't like force the company to close it. So we see that Laura is a crack shot. She is a expert marksman at the age of like eight, 12, 19. She's only getting more and more adept at shooting. I mean, she better be. She's shooting the bottles off of the gravestones, and if she hits the gravestones, yeah. she's gotta fix them. Yeah, but there's yeah. also, there's a sequence where we see, like, right now we're seeing, like, this kind of, maybe it's depicted from Laura's journal, but we see this, like, loving father who's just, who's just so totally dope. You know, it's like in Preacher, when uh, <laughs> Tulip's father, like, just loved her so much, treating her like a boy and teaching her how to shoot, and like, Tulip's a crack shot, and she's a badass, and isn't that awesome? And it's like, look, I'm not, the, I'm not, I'm not giving Preacher a hard time, I love Preacher. <laughs> but I think there might be something about that in here, where it's mm -hmm. like, we're seeing her dad being like, I'm so proud of you, Laura, you're so great. 
then later maybe it was projections. Yeah, maybe, maybe it wasn't, that wasn't so such great. a good idea. Yeah. Well, not only that was not a good idea because it also it ended in her fucking death. Yeah, she tried to assassinate a, a political, political figure yeah. and fucking got assassinated for it. But like, yeah, but maybe maybe he wasn't so great a father too. As he's training Laura to shoot, he's also talking about the world they live in, and where he's like, the squids are coming. <laughs> I like, mean, what already oh. came? The squid came. It wrecked everything, and. It just, and that's it? Like, no. And so for 35 years, there's like a subset of America that is waiting for the next squid attack. Oh, man. And is preparing <laughs> for it. Right. And maybe Laura was made as an instrument for yeah. the, the, the squid, the squid invasion. The squid yeah. invasion, which Oh, of course, yeah, one person with a gun is going to sell well, well no, from no, she's one of the army. You know, yeah, the army yes. of patriots. And there so. will be, and you'll you'll see the rest of them in a little bit. But mm. like, I think you mean citizens. Yeah, exactly. No, oh, because not citizens. Meyerson was sovereign citizen. Was, yeah, <laughs> Meyerson was not uh, an objectivist. You know, he did not believe in the like select few are exceptional and should do it. Uh, Cummings does. Mm, okay. But he also loved Pontius Pirate. So right. he worshipped Meyerson, or at least he he revered him, and made sure that Laura read them too, and made sure she didn't read any books. Just read these pirate comics, because <laughs> they talk about what's real, you know, and they talk about like what's what's meaningful. Uh -huh. And uh, and and Meyerson hated them, you know. He he right. made them and he did this. It's all yeah. fluff. It's garbage. It's for it's for the masses, and hmm. and the citizens like and the real guy, shit. Yeah, this is yeah. Yeah, I was just pirate. Yeah, mm -hmm. this guy knows what's up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we see That's like so you know. Laura's father is like taking her into the into the bunker yeah. and explaining, oh you know, God. like how, uh, how when when you when we had you, we I knew you were special, and I told your mother, and your mother laughed, and she always laughed at important shit. And not shortly thereafter, I had to kill her. Oh. And we what? see like the wall of guns, and he's like, it wasn't her fault; it was the squids. That the squids got into her mind. Oh and, no! Like, and like turned her against me. <gasps> Oh my God! You know, she starts I, saying crazy stuff like "I'm gonna leave you" and "Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. take, I'm gonna take uh, uh, Laura well, away." Maybe, like, maybe she isn't exceptional, or, or maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Right? Or maybe my politics are not quite the right thing. Yeah. You'll see that paid off in a really big way. But mm. he says she was a good woman. That was a sad day when wow. I had to kill your mother. And uh, and then we see like, you know, her father's rolling with these. These militia guys. Yeah, yeah. And she is the best shot out of all of them. And we see that, like, she's learning knife fighting and she's learning bomb <laughs> diffusion. And they're just, they're preparing for the war with the squids, which is inevitable. Right. And and that's the thing that, you, that Ozymandias didn't think about. Right. You know, it was like. create this, like, crazy, like, cult. You I gave us an enemy. I didn't yeah. expect them to go nuts with it. I yeah. thought that they would just make them afraid. And it's like, there are some people who don't want to be afraid. Or they're so yeah. afraid they're going to believe anything. Yeah. I mean, don't forget about, like, the seances where it's like, oh, no. Like, the spirit man is going to send messages from my dead daughter to to me. So I can, like, have something to hold on to. Right. And we see, like, a little bit of a glimpse of what her, what her father really is like. Where he just, he has this bucket of squids and he just shoves it in Laura's face. Is calamari no longer an acceptable appetizer? I, assume, I assume it changes things. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. But uh, maybe, Or maybe you eat all the more. Right. You eat every squid you can. Yeah. The only good squids are dead. <laughs> I'm doing my part. <laughs> I'm doing my part too. <laughs> her father calls her one day, when she's 12, out to the graveyard. Says, mm -hmm. I need your help with something. It's only going to take a second. And he sits against a gravestone. He proceeds to tell her about... Uh, He's like, I was reading this comic book recently. Mm -hmm. Not about pirates, something real. <laughs> it was The Citizen by our most revered author, Will Meyerson. Uh. And he's fighting the unthinker, and they're fighting over and over again. He's talking about, like, you know, one time this guy's winning, the other time he's winning. And they're arguing about what's evil and what's not. And reading it made me wonder what side I was on. And that's when I knew the squids had had me. Uh -huh. So I need you to kill me. Oh my God. Like that's when I knew the squids had taken my brain. When I was started to question my own belief system. Yeah, because the because, author. Because I'd the author was effective in their fucking writing. And but it also I'm to, right. Yeah, I have to be right. I can't be yeah. wrong because then I killed my wife for no fucking reason. Right. So no, actually the squids took over me. I mean, there's there's a lot of layers. Like does he actually cognitize the, the, the fact that the squid thing is bullshit? Probably not. Right. But, but I mean, maybe subconsciously. But yeah. the idea that like, and that's also demonstrating the power of comics, where it's like, right. or story, the idea that like, 
an idea presented from a comic book that's earnest can infect your brain and change your beliefs. Yeah, even an idea that the writer himself doesn't even no, he subscribe to. He does. Well, he, not the not citizen. The, he yeah, does. the oh. citizen, but. The, this guy was originally influenced into an entire ideology by something that the author of that Did, yeah. book didn't even believe in. That's true. And then he read what the guy actually thought. Yeah, and, and he's it, like, like oh. destroyed his world. <laughs> exactly. You know, you never know who is a squid and who isn't. Like, right. You know, squids he, walk among us. Yeah, and he fills her head with Ugh. all this shit, and he explains like how he's going to make it look like a suicide and how you know once you because I can't do it because like the squids won't let me. You know. So uh, right. did you try? <laughs> yeah. I did. I bet you didn't. I did. I couldn't pull it off. I but couldn't. he says, but he says, don't tell anybody about the squids, though, because once they find out, like then yeah. you're in danger. Ah, uh, yeah. So. But you've been telling me to talk about the squids with you my whole life. Right. Well, don't they, they yeah. already know. Well, that's between us. Well, he, you know, he, I killed my wife to stop it. I thought I, I thought I put a lid on it. Right. So she shoots him without question. Right. You know, he's a loyal soldier. Yeah. Kisses him goodbye. Says, "I love you, daddy." And then we see that, like, she talks about the mines again, mm. and how the the government kept letting it happen, and. After a while, you started to see a pattern, and like my daddy saw a lot of patterns in things, <laughs> and the yeah. squids speak in patterns, and of course, patterns are Rorschachs. Uh, that's the evidence that the squids are back, and they're here, and they're doing it, and we have to stop it. Like that, we are the only people on the front lines to stop the squids. Right. And then yeah. we see this sequence, and it's kind of like the turning point for a lot of people when they're reading this book, where the the detective sitting in the diner, and he speaks across the the aisle, and he says, "I found your book, Laura." Like, and he proceeds to explain like how he's a good detective. I found the book, and it was in this one place where she used to live behind a wall. And she goes, I left that for you to find. Like, I wanted someone smart who knew what I was talking about to find it. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? And then Rorschach turns around in the booth across from him and says, well, you're the detective. What do you see? Is he going crazy? Is the detective, like, because the detective is now, like, seeing and talking yeah. to the kid in Rorschach. Now, this could be an element of his character where it's like, you know, it's like a movie yeah. where, like, I, I, I see things differently, and yeah. you know the, the 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 cold case comes to life, and like yeah. it's how you crack the case. It kind takes of thing. me with them. Like I go on the dream. Or something. Yeah, yeah, but like I have to put myself in their shoes. Yeah, yeah. so I'm talking have a to conversation them. I'm imagine their them. conversations. And shit. Exactly. exactly, but like or or he's losing it. Yeah, or the squids are real. Yeah. Or the squids are well, and real. And that's right, that's the book. And this is the squid. But like, but you know. But you know they're because not. Because you read Watchmen, <laughs> Watchmen that they're fucking not. So everyone is crazy. <laughs> and you're like, fuck that. But it, but but it's so good. You're like reading it and you're like, well, maybe the squids are maybe real. The squids then, are real. And it's know. like, oh, fuck. Because then you're like, if, if you start thinking the squids are real while you're reading the book, <laughs> hopefully you snap out of it and you realize like. But they can't be. Well, that's the power of ideas and persuasion and groupthink and like the effect that that kind of, like when you live in an immerse, when you immerse yourself in one reality for mm -hmm. too long, you, you you get affected by it. Right. In essence, when you, you, you see patterns that aren't there, you're seeing a Rorschach test. Yeah. So then- uh, Also, then, uh, I have to note, when Rorschach says, what do you see? He's looking at the detective, yes. but he's also looking at us. That's right. What do you see, reader? Mm. Fuck. The whole issue is the detective has an interview with a circus strongman with whom the kid worked between the time when she killed her father and when she hooked up with Myerson. Okay. Uh, she's she, like a crack shot. She's a crack shot. She gets yeah. this whole like ensemble. She is the kid. She didn't want people knowing her name, so was, most people just knew her by that. And she had a whole costume that is essentially just her being like Annie Oakley. But it's also, and that's like a blend, I think. It's like she's a superhero. She's a cowboy. But also it's like pirates were the replacement for superheroes because they were real cowboys. Does that also fit in with that motif? Right. Or like, are were cowboys also super like the analog for superheroes in this world, where it's like people love superheroes in our reality, and kind of like you know pirates are a niche thing. Whereas if you flip the script in Watchmen, like pirates are superheroes, but we're like what were cowboys? Right. Also superheroes. Yeah. Maybe. 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 In shows I mean, like this. Yeah. They didn't manifest in comic form, no. but in uh, well, entertainment. Well, maybe they did. Maybe in Indian Or they comics. did, yeah. <laughs> she has a, uh, she has a, like a Lone Ranger style mask. She does. She has so a mask. domino mask. Superhero mask. Yeah. She, through her friendship with the strong man who is like, who is simple. There's something wrong with him. <laughs> uh-huh. And he has the, you know, he has the mentality of a, of a, of a child. Okay. But he's also like, he, he's, he appears brutish and strong, but he's not like an oaf, but also he's a murderer because like there's a mm. discussion later where, um, you know, someone who works for the circus, uh, he was an abusive husband and he got drunk and he beat his wife to death and he 
they, they had a cast party, drunkenly confessed it, and Laura's like, well, the squids have him. He's doing the wrong thing. He's not being a member of the, he's not, he's not part of the system. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the squids must have made him nuts. I have to go kill him. That's what I do. <laughs> and so she tells him that he knows that they're gonna arrest her, so then he makes it look like an accident and like pushes him off of like a ledge oh. while he's hammered, which he's like, nobody asks questions. But that was the first time that he killed for her. Mm. Oh, okay. To and prevent her from killing and going to jail. Yes, yeah, but okay. she misinterpreted that. And it's not that. like he killed him accidentally. No. like, oh, I'm just too strong. He and... murdered him. Like, he yeah. pushes him. Uh, but Comes up the, behind him. And, <laughs> and pushes him off the ledge. Yeah. But then she goes to him and she's like, like, we were friends. Like, we ate together and you did this. Like, I, you know, I know who you are. And he's like, what? <laughs> who am I? Well, who am I? And she's like, you're Rorschach. And he's like, what? what? And I feel bad because like this poor man, like I mean he's a murderer and he's shacked up with his 19 year old and he's much older than her. And mm. he also insists that he did not make it physical. And he was just mm. like, no, she was she was nice to me. And we were, we were like, I comforted her. Cause sometimes she would come to me, like to my trailer crying and then want to sleep with me, but not like sexually, she just mm. wanted comfort. And so there's something there. Yeah, like uh, sleep next to him. Exactly. Mm. So then he proceeds to explain that she tells a story about how why aren't there heroes anymore? Why is it right around the time the squids showed up, the superheroes all left? <laughs> so she explains like the squids were getting too powerful. So if the, if, the, if the squids took over the heroes, we'd be fucked. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Manhattan knew that. And so he destroyed their corporeal forms and sent their souls into people the squids wouldn't be able to find. Oh. And so Rorschach's soul must be in this strong man. <sighs> Just, Oof, that's a bit of a stretch. Right, but like that's... <laughs> Yep. This girl that never got a childhood yeah. is making rules yeah. for her world. Yeah, I mean, he made okay. it. Her dad made him up as he went along. Why yep. wouldn't she? Yeah, She's just trying to make a reality that she can find palatable. Yeah. But wow. we see this whole sequence. like That's how it's like, oh, it is a sequel to Watchmen. You see the Watchmen characters. But yeah. like, no. They are there. Uh, they happen. But Ozymandias, he thought he could outsmart the squids, which is why he didn't go through the procedure, which is why he's still here. Right. Like why he made it. And then it made him go crazy. And I'm like, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, so, yeah, then uh, after she reveals to him he's Rorschach and he kind of doesn't buy it, but yeah. he's down. Because <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, well, he's, but he's also But he's also slow. stupid. He's so. also like, <laughs> maybe I am Rorschach. Oh, am I Rorschach? Well, and you could tell, like, oh, he no. said, I was afraid, but I didn't want to show her because then maybe she wouldn't believe I was him. Right. But I like him dressing as Rorschach. He's just this big, scary Rorschach. <laughs> and they just, they just hunt down people who they think are bad and kill them. Oh. So that's what they did for a while. Okay. Until one day the FBI caught up with him and arrested him. Cause he's a murderer. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like they catch a supervillain type character. So there are villains. That's a flashback I think oh. to the real Rorschach oh. and what he did back in the oh, day. Okay, all right, yeah. So the FBI arrests him and he still kind of like is, he thinks he's Rorschach and he's after his ordeal, he, he, he buys into it. Mm. And he explains that she's like, she is a savior and she's gonna save the world. And the detective is like, her name is Laura Cummings. She's fucking dead. She duped another guy named Will Myerson into dressing like Rorschach and he's dead too. There is nothing. <laughs> and he says, no, 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 no. See, death didn't stop Rorschach. Like, you know, maybe I was Rorschach, or maybe I wasn't, man. And like, she's not dead no, either. No, you weren't though. You definitely weren't. Yeah. <laughs> so then the detective goes to uh, his his contact with the Trilly campaign to give him the update about what's going on. Yeah, which is... Oh, like this is... Who, well, so, it's a batshit crazy Yeah, they, they both went nuts. It was definitely Will Myerson. She somehow duped him into it. She's yeah. a, you know, yeah. Yeah, but why? Why Turley? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, obviously, he's taken by the squids. Right? <laughs> well, we. Well, She's got to kill the squids. Well, here's the thing: like Turley embodies the values that her father right. believed so in. So think right now, was. there's no reason for them yeah. to think it's Turley. Right. But uh, so uh, the detective's contact proceeds to like they're at a bar and they're getting information. They're just getting they're just drinking hard liquor, mm -hmm. and he's talking about talking to Turley and how he's like, okay, so here's the thing. Turley thinks that Redford sent these people to kill him. 
he's full blown conspiracy theorist uh -huh. about this. Right. He is he is seeing things that aren't there when it comes to like patterns about Redford wanting him dead. I need you to not feed into it, not play into it, and not give him anything that he might use. If there is any whiff of Redford in this, leave it out of your report. Uh. Because I believe this guy will fix America, but I need him to not be unhinged. If he goes <laughs> on TV, right. starts spouting about Redford wanting him dead, right. he's not gonna get elected. Right, like right. that's the end of his career. Exactly, so you, you have a different part to play in this, please don't do this. Okay, he goes, great, because Charlie wants to meet you, let's go. He's like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? He's like, why do you think we're drinking? Hmm. So then they get picked up by a limo, they get taken in, and we meet uh, Turley's like chief of security, Jacobs. And Jacobs is, again, like Turley and Jacobs are both Nam vets. Uh. Um, and by the way, uh, speaking of Vietnam, uh, the reason why uh, Redford keeps winning is because Vietnam is the 51st state, and it's huge. <laughs> okay. we, we keep Vietnam? Yeah. yeah. We, well, we had, we had Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. He ended the war and took it. I didn't realize we kept it. I thought he just ended the war. Well, that's, yeah. uh, that's what Watchmen said. But then yeah. the Watchmen TV show and this said Vietnam became a state. Oh, yeah, I didn't watch That's a whole goddamn though. country. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Jacobs is like, all right, like, come on, I got to check you. And he's thorough. Mm. Not like I'm not making a joke about him, like, doing rectal exams. I'm just saying, like, right. he will check. Right. You know? And he goes, do you have any recording devices? Mr. Trilly doesn't want to be recorded. And he's like, no. And then he proceeds to tell Jacobs, like, you're the guy who took the kill shot. Mm. Like, you killed Rorschach. Right. And he's like, yeah. He is beckoned oh by God. Turley, who is, of course, taking a deuce while having this meeting. Come on in! Yeah, come on in, we'll talk. Jesus. He's reading the paper, he's taking a deuce. This is, of course, a, uh, an homage to LBJ, who notoriously would do this. Ah. Uh. LBJ would take meetings while taking a deuce. LBJ would also whip out his dick in Congress because he was so big. He'd be yeah. like, check out the anaconda. What? Yeah, you, you didn't know about LBJ know and his dick obsession. He was just so proud of it. He's like, well, I mean, it's got to take, it. it's got to get some air. And it was obviously like an intimidation tactic. Like yeah. he was just a wacko who was like, was, yeah. I mean, that's you know, that's fucking psychotic. Yeah, you, you know, you, you think about like uh, embarrassments to the office, and then you think about like uh, LBJ helicopter dicking on the floor, and you're like, oh, I guess that's, I guess we've had a long history of, yeah. of, of crassity in the, in the White House. So. The, so Charlie's like, all right, come on, like, get, get out of here. Like, all right, I got to wipe. You, you go wait in my office. And we go into his office, and right over his, uh, over his desk is a massive smiley face portrait. What? Because Turley loves the comedian. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. They met in Vietnam. Ah. Uh, and then we see this flashback awesome. to uh, the comedian who's extracting this woman and... Turley was a, was a gunner, and he kills like all these Viet Cong, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a back and forth, you know, comedian's like, man, you killed a lot, you wanna know how many you killed? <laughs> and he's like, nah, you can tell the medical officer, cause I want him, my daddy wants me to win a medal, and I want a whole thing of medals. So you tell them, and he goes, no, you, you wanna know? You wanna know the number? Sometimes, most, most people don't wanna know the number, cause it's so fucked up. <laughs> and Turley's like, yeah, I wanna know, and he goes, not enough. Oh, God. <laughs> That's the comedian. And when he says that, of course, Turley told that story, and he just laughs and laughs. Uh -huh. You're like, oh my God. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, and then he says, "That's the, that's the first time I met him. I, or the first time I saw the, the comedian." Uh -huh. And uh, we can see that, like, while the detective is talking to Turley, the kid and Rorschach are outside in the rain, waiting, and uh -huh. like watching him, as what? as Turley proceeds to talk about. Redford and how he wants him dead and you know and right. detective doesn't give him anything he's just like that is not what the evidence points to sir and he's like bullshit <sighs> and uh, if you if you look at your copy of Watchmen King picked out Turley like there is a guy in the platoon in the background oh, that that's like, this fun. is who Turley was uh, so that's cool uh, the detective leaves Jacobs is like okay get a frisky again want to make sure you didn't take anything <laughs> All right. And he's like, okay. Well, Jacobs I, is like, you got fine, an Fine, keep the ashtray. And he's like, you got, an, <laughs> you got an attitude on you. You want to hit me, don't you? I know it. And he's just like, no, I don't. But if you want to get hit, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so he goes oh, back to his, so he goes back to his contact. He's talking at the bar and he's like, hey, uh, did he mention Redford at all? And the detective goes, no. What? 
And then he, Rorschach, and the kid leave the bar, and they just laugh at him as they leave. And you're like, oh my god. Interesting. So then, this book is getting unhinged. Yeah. yeah. Next story is how Laura met Will. Okay. Important. After her strongman accomplice gets pinched, she's kind of stuck. So she shacks up in a motel and just starts and just writes a letter to Will Myerson, which you could have done by, back in the day with Steve Ditko. Hmm. Uh, Steve Ditko was notorious for responding to fan letters. Right. I wrote him one myself. I never got one because he was sick at the time, but uh, and then passed away shortly thereafter. Mm. Uh, but I know apparently. But he, you can find them online. They're amazing because he he hand wrote them on like lined white paper. Right. With a pencil. Uh, but anyway, she read she writes him this letter because she's lost. She doesn't know what to do now, and all she has is the writings of Will Myerson. Right. So she writes him a letter, basically just saying like, you know, just explaining who she not not really just setting up their relationship mm -hmm. you know she just says you know I've been reading your work especially your stuff with the citizen and the unthinker and they're in my dreams mm. but she's not like and that means the squid's got me and I gotta kill myself no she's like it's 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 affecting her so she thinks to reach out to him and he's like hey thank you like that's very kind you know it's very very cordial and very professional um, those... thank you for saying that she's like no I'm not saying it to be nice. No, 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 she is. Like, well, yeah. She's she's looking for someone. She's looking for something, like some connection. And uh, we find that these letters are all collected and sent to the detective who reads them all. Mm -hmm. We see this, like, this descent into their relationship. And when I say relationship, I mean, like, their connection. Yeah. They don't sleep association. together. No, their yeah. association. Yeah, thank you. That's a good, that's a good way to call it. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, she's like, I'm, I was very excited to see your letter, you know, and it gets, it, it grows. And he, as he, she shares more of herself, he shares more of himself. She mentioned she had a dream where she's in church and the citizen is there with her. And then he mentions that when he was a boy, he read Frankenstein and Frankenstein was written by a little girl who was only 19. When I was finished, the monster was in my room. You know, there, there, you know there's something yeah. there between us. Yeah, yeah. And then we see like a flashback while she's talking about it of her father just screaming at her. Oh. And like, because she's missing the shots because she is hitting the green stone. But, oh. uh, but the, 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 that her training was not sunshine and rainbows. Right. And then yeah, she had to saw, get good. We saw previously when she was already excellent. Exactly. To get there. And how proud and happy he was. But yeah. to get there, he had to, he was incredibly abusive. Yeah, mm. he was a monster. But she's like, I, I read the book. And I feel bad for the monster. It's not like the movie. And, mm. uh, you know. No, the movie. It's another movie. Oh, reference. another movie is bullshit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, just, 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 you get the impression like maybe she was happy to kill her father. Mm. Or maybe she loved her father, but recognizes now that he was not the best role model. And right. Maybe she's seeking out another one. Mm. And when she shares more of herself, he tells a story about uh, how uh, there, there, was a, there was a case one time where uh, a young woman was brutalized and murdered in their neighborhood. And he remembers vividly like his father hearing it like at dinner through the window, and he closed the window. Mm. And how he never asked his father about it. Like, he never interjected. He never tried. I am a failure. <laughs> Sincerely, Will. <laughs> Dear Mr. Myerson, today I tried to kill myself, but I thought I'd write you a letter instead. Oh. And then he proceeds to talk about, like, I guess the last time he wanted to die. Mm -hmm. When he was working as, like, a, a staff artist, drawing nonsense, drawing mm -hmm. garbage. And how, you know, he's like, I hope you're well, and I hope you know I need you. Oh. Uh. Meanwhile, the detective has nothing to go on, so he's listening to the tapes again. And he okay. listens to the names, and he hears, you know, the, this is Frank Miller. Right. So he goes out to, to track down this, this Frank, Frank Miller. Miller. Yeah. That's while, while he's off to go track down this Frank Miller, we learned that Laura has decided to go and meet Will. She's like, I'm on my way to you. And he's like, you know, perhaps together we will discover who we are. We see this like juxtaposition of like him knocking on a door, her knocking on his door. He opens the door, and while Laura and Will meet, Will Myerson being like, of course like an eighty-year-old man at this point, mm -hmm. uh, the detective is waiting for presumably Frank Miller to come, and instead Rorschach is sitting on his sofa watching the debates between Turley and Redford. Okay, like, that's creepy. Yep. So uh, Rorschach meets 
the detective at the doorway. He says, the debate's over. You want to come inside? Now, is this a different... No, oh, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so is this he, in his head no, or is it real? Well, he, no, it's not. Okay. I don't think it is, but maybe not. All but right. he says, okay. <laughs> he looks on his wall and he sees this big, beautiful mural of a like dope-ass pirate comic book thing <laughs> with lightning behind it. Okay. That's cool. Because Frank Miller in this universe is a pirate a, comic. Right, a pirate comic called <laughs> The Dark Fife Returns. The Dark Fife. The Dark Fife was a equally popular, maybe almost as popular as Pontius Pirate comic book <laughs> character who was for children and a bunch of bullshit. But then right. Frank Miller came along and wrote this like deconstruction of that character and oh really modernized God. him for an adult audience. <laughs> That's awesome. So Frank proceeds to tell the story about how um, Otto Binder, this comic book creator, uh, his daughter was killed. Uh, it's a really tragic story because it's real. Oh. Otto Binder is actually the creator of like Supergirl and his daughter was tragically killed in a bus accident. Her, the, a, a, a bus jumped the curb outside her school and hit her. Oh, and geez. It, it destroyed him and his family. His wife had a mental breakdown and he uh, killed himself with drinking and eventually had a heart attack. Oh, wow. And uh, it was horrible. But did he create Supergirl after? Before. Before. Yeah. Oh, that's... Oh. He's been creating comics for a while, and his daughter dies, and so he gets really into, like, UFOs and mm. the occult, or at the very least with this concept of, like, spirit, yeah, reaching out to the of dead. spirit talking. Yeah, okay. This really happened, and a group of comic book fans who knew of Otto Binder's work went to his house to, like, offer their condolences and ended up doing this seance, oh. including 16-year-old comic book creator Frank Miller. Oh. Whoa. This is a huh. real story that happened to Frank Miller. Huh. Interesting. They do their seance, they hit the record button, you know, they hit the play button, Binner's like, okay, that's be enough, and you just see, like, this noise. Mm -hmm. So we see Will Meyerson was there, too, and he and Frank Miller are talking, and he's just like, so what do you think? And he's like, well, uh, I think it's hard to lose a child. Mm. Yeah. So then one day, uh, years later, <laughs> Frank Miller is met again by Will Myers, and this time dressed as Rorschach with the kid. Uh -huh. It's Frank goddamn Miller. Yeah, it's Frank Miller. That's so funny. Which apparently was a whole thing. Behind the scenes. Will Myerson and the kid like meet up with Frank Miller and the kid meets him for the first time. She's like, oh, Mr. Miller, it's such an honor. The Dark Five returns. One of my, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, they decide they're going to like, did you like the second one that I did? <laughs> the Dark Five shows <laughs> the again. Dark Five turns into like a, a frog. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking Brainiac, but yes. Yeah, where it's Who not- Who would Brainiac be in the Dark Five? Oh my god! <laughs> no, yeah, like an alien, but uh, like- well, It'd have to be, because Brainiac is an alien, yeah. but Blackbeard? Like, yeah, it'd have to be like, no, it'd be like an Englishman or something, like yeah. be somebody from the, you know, from, from the West. <laughs> Maybe a Viking. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, Meyerson clearly tells the kid about the seance and about the, the tapes, and the kid and Meyerson like listen to the tapes, and then they bring it to Miller, and then they play it for Miller, and they're like, listen. Like, and it's because like Laura really believes in the spirits. Yeah, and clearly like it's gotten to Will because he's dressed like goddamn Rorschach. Yeah. But uh yeah, so they're like now that we're connecting like that seance we had when we were young to this experience now with Laura's fanaticism, maybe we're hearing something. And mm. so uh, they they play the tape and just it's nothing. Right. It's just, it's just, just and then she's and, and he goes there. And Frank's like, wait, I don't understand. What 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 is this? Is this like that tape we made like back when we were kids? <laughs> like you know, what's going on? And Laura says, I can hear it. Kill Turley. Oh, oh. Yeah. So she's been reading The Citizen. Mm -hmm. She's seeing it in her, in her dreams. She doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know where she's going. But I think, I think, the, the, the interpretation here is that like, I, I think she is explaining 
the turn. You know, her father read The Citizen and was like, oh no, I'm starting to question my own belief system. Kill me. She's like, no, this is all still part of the narrative. And if, the, if, if, if me reading The Citizen is making me change my like personal politics or maybe believe in something, then I would hear to kill Turley because Turley is antithetical to the belief of The Citizen and Will Meyerson. Mm-hmm. And so it's yeah, like, she's not saying like, I have to kill Turley. She's understanding that like, if I'm hearing it, it's all real. Oh yeah. Well also like that, it's not just like, I was going to, you know, I, I definitely hated Redford, but we should definitely kill Turley because it said kill Turley. Like maybe she's, that's the leap in logic that her brain is writing for her. Mm -hmm. Laura and Will combined fuck up Frank Miller and now he believes it too. <laughs> Oh okay. man, they should go to Alan Moore's house too. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I didn't ask him about that. I should have been like, was there, a talk, was there a talk about putting Alan Moore in the book? And he was like, fuck it's no. too real. Yeah. Well, and that's the weird thing, right? Because like, okay, so, and they'll deny it. Uh, there was a period in DC where they redesigned Swamp Thing and suddenly Swamp Thing had all these vines coming down his head and out of his face. And Swamp Thing looks suspiciously like Alan Moore. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? Like, what? And does DC own the likeness rights for Alan Moore? What is Miller's reaction to hearing that Laura and- uh, And Will are dead? Will are dead. Uh, similar to everybody else, you know, where he's like, yeah. Like, I don't believe it. I mean, I believe it, but like, it doesn't matter because, you know, Dr. Manhattan's I've on Mars and he's shooting shit, yeah. He's shooting rays at us and stuff. Mm. Uh, he, he explains, like, creating the, the dark fight for turns and how uh, all the stuff. Um, Did yeah. he dress up like oh. Rorschach because Will died? I think it's, no, it's, no, because he didn't know that Will was dead. They haven't, they haven't released that information yet. They I want know he didn't release that, the information. But like, is it real? No, it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not really happening. No, he dresses like it because- The is fake. Okay, it's the all fake. I, I think that, because he talks about how he laments that we wrote The Dark Fight Returns and how it's not as impactful or as important as Watchmen. That's really what it is. <laughs> and yeah. so he's like, I wrote The Dark Fight Returns and like, and then, and I'm living in New York, you know, and then fucking the squid shows up and it blows everything up and my book didn't do anything. Mm. And I wrote this book about like, you know, huh? Batman being big and cool. That doesn't mean anything. And then I listened to the tape. Batman, and I, I mean this pirate. Right. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And then I heard this tape and now I hear something. Like maybe I maybe I did. And it's like, I think it's like lamenting the fact that it's like, I don't feel like I made anything as impactful as what Will did. And so now yeah. I, I, I need something in my life. And now, so now I'm Rorschach, I guess. Okay. He's not like killing yeah, so people. I put on the Rorschach so I just, I wear this well, get up. short, I put this stuff on. I <laughs> put all this shit on. I yeah. was just hoping it wasn't like suddenly just one day, like, a few days ago, or however many days ago, I just got the urge to dress like Rorschach. I just started, yeah, I only yeah. started doing this the other day. Well, but then, What like, date was that? My God, that's the day that Will died. Yeah, basically what he does is he, he's like, I wanted to talk about like what fear was, but I didn't know, and blah, blah, blah. But then he plays the tape for the detective and he goes, do you hear it now? Do you hear it? Because now I hear it and it says, kill Turley. Like it very clearly says, kill Turley. Just like they heard, mm. so he's, he's, he's gone too, you know? Like, oh boy. And the detective's listening to it. Yeah, and he's like, oh jeez. But so the detective is now interrogating three witnesses. Okay, this is weird because we talked about how to read comic books because of course we have two novices of comic books. Over the years, it's been, you know, but. We've gotten a little better. Yeah, but uh, but how to read comics, right? Left to right, unless, yeah. it's, unless it's manga. <laughs> We're not gonna get into it. But uh, with this, it was deliberately written and drawn so you could read it any fucking way you want. This whole issue. Oh really? Is written and drawn so you could read it back, right to left, left to right, up to down, down and up. How is that possible? That's how it was arranged. No, but I mean, how would it make any sense? If you read it, I could read any, any random panels in any random order and it would still make as much sense? I know. Well, like, I can't read this page before and the, I read like, that, yeah, could I read that like page. this page and no. then like this page and then go back to this okay, one? Okay, so the, and then pages, go, are the in order. pages are in order, but the panels are not. Oh, uh, okay. Or the panels can be read in any order. Interesting. The detective is beating the shit out of these three people to get information, and it turns out that like this is where we move to the compound that, of course, like we need to have in this book. I'm sorry, the detective is beating people up? Yeah. 
Yeah, because he doesn't believe them because they're giving him like bullshit. They're giving him the same story and they've got their stories all synced up perfectly. Mm -hmm. And I need real information, not the shit you're telling me. Not mm -hmm. the shit that you know they wanted me to find out. I need to know real shit because I'm fucking losing it. Are you sure you didn't hear anything on that tape? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, uh, Will Myerson had a therapist and he saw him once in a while and he, so he made sure the therapist came down to the to the farmhouse. He had a guy he knew who like fixed stuff. He hired him to come it's down. It's not the son of... No, it's not that guy. <laughs> no, he's not doomsday clocking this. It's the son of the, of the, the therapist. the son of the therapist. He became a therapist too. Yeah. He's Will Myerson's therapist. Right? I'm surprised it wasn't the therapist from that. Well, no, he died. But, uh, so yeah, it's just... They they get they give their impressions. They're all different people. They have their own different interpretations about what Laura was like, about what Will was like, and and they but they all stayed in the farmhouse or the the compound. It's just mm. this house that they, was built mm -hmm. in the middle of the fucking Nevada desert. Um, it's, it's clearly, where they could train. And yeah. We're talking about. We're, we'll yeah. see that in a minute. But yeah. like, you know, we got a we got a carpenter. We got a fucking uh, we got a therapist. And the therapist just like, would meet with Myerson. Myerson would never take the mask off. Uh, the carpenter would help. You know, build what they were building, and he didn't really know what he was building yet. Hmm. Uh, and uh, and and a money man, like his accountant, who would help him like arrange funds and move things around. Okay. Uh, but all of them have, like, deniability. You know, where they're like, I I mean, listen. He I mean, he didn't explain to me what I needed to dig or what I needed. Right. Like he just said, dig he just here, said, yeah. put this here, that kind of thing. And so he would talk to me about stuff, or like I would, you know, put investments for him. I didn't know what it was for. Right. And then you see like what they built on the like near the farmhouse. They built this big old fucking like crow's nest scaffolding thing that's around the same height the, the catwalk would be. Yeah, yeah. And they have this like sniper rifle, and they were all brought by Laura to the top to take their shot on what they also recreated, which was the fucking stage that Turley will be on at the beginning of the book. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, it and doesn't say Turley on it, but you can make it. We get it, yeah. because we saw the rest of it, but yeah. How they each have to take their shot, and like it's this very small target, none of them could hit it, uh -huh. but Laura hit it every single time. Oh my god. So why is oh, she... Oh yeah, it's a smiley face. Yeah. It's a smiley oh, face, yeah. and it's like getting hit with blood. Yeah, in the spot. In yeah. the spot. It mm -hmm. had so, I just assumed why, it was like a she, cantaloupe or something. Why is she yeah. like bringing other people to try to take the shot. Is she like not wanting to do it herself and she's finding out that like, no, God, didn't none of these people it, can. It could be that. I think that's not a bad interpretation. I assume it's like to really impress upon them and be like, don't fuck with us. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what we're doing now. And right. you're complicit. Well, why does she have I, them take a shot? I, I guess because they're. I guess just, well, so they, so there's no fucking way they could mistake what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also think it's because she, because later she's like, they're, they're talking about the, how about taking the shot, like just she and Will. And you know, Will's like, "You're the best. You will do it." She's like, "Oh, you're so sure." Like, she's not quite sure, mm. and, but she does hit it every time. And I think she's trying to show, like, okay. maybe she's trying to see if it is possible, even if it isn't her. You know, like, is it possible? Like, I got three people to try and take it, but also she's doing it like it's a game. You know, like she made them do it. She's like, "Nah," like you know, none of them have taken shots like that before, and so she's like, make fun of them and stuff. Mm. Oh, by the way, the detective called the cops on Miller, and he got arrested. <laughs> ah. So Miller's gone. He got uh, arrested for for what? For collaborating, for sending money to these people. Oh. I, I mean, he did hear crime. the message kill Turley. Yeah, he, he I did guess. it. He did admit to aiding and abetting these fugitives, like these or these these would be assassins. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason this uh, the detective is roughing these guys up is because like they're all saying like I didn't have any information like yes. they compartmentalized it well, like that's not possible well, you must have like, something well, yeah and like what were their attitudes what were their demeanor he's like oh I mean Will you know Will seemed fine like he wore the mask but like that's kind of it like he just seemed like himself like, like I knew if him. you know Will he's in the mask and he's yeah. like no like you went to his thing you had therapy sessions in the mask and that's not yeah. normal you must have seen it without the mask well not only that but like that if you accepted that. Fuck you, man. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. a reason <laughs> that you're telling me this story. Like, you, it is so well rehearsed. Like, you're telling me the same shit and you're all acting like it's normal. It's not. <laughs> He's like, just, what is going on? And then all three of them look at him and say, oh, it's you. I've been waiting for you. And then he leaves and they're like, so how'd it go? And he's like, uh, pff, uh never mind. <laughs> same story, different day. Uh, you, uh, you got some red on you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. I've got full. I've got full immunity to do that. The FBI is aiding me. But uh, yeah, and they go. Uh, you know, I asked them all. Uh, they're like a cult. That's what they're. That's what they're all like. All of them. They've all got hooked 
in by like Laura and Meyerson. It was a coordinated plan. They clearly planned it. It was all set up. Like I'm getting, I'm getting to the bottom of this. But they did say to me, if I ask the right question, I get the right answer. And the right answer is the squids are here. So then we see uh, the conversation that like Laura and Will have after they've gone. The only moment where these two get to be like regular human beings for a minute, because mm. she's talking about like what her plan, is, what they're doing, and she's like, "What if he moves? Like it's an impossible shot. Like I'm right. getting this every time because it's like all the way over here. And it's, right. it's stationary." It's stationary yeah. And he says, so "Yeah." She's expressing doubt about her own. She does. She's what? You think I'm that good? And he goes, "I do." And she laughs and then starts weeping, and she goes, "I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good for anything." Mm. And then she hugs him and she goes, "Mr. Myerson, what's wrong with me?" And you're like, "Oh, mm. like this child." Yeah. It's just like, and it's like everything, honey. <laughs> yeah, you, you were, were. You were trained to be a weapon by your asshole, crazy ass father. You've never had. You've never had a baseline of normal. Yeah. Who murdered your mother? Yes, and told you that it was okay because like telepathic squids were controlling her mind because she like dis <laughs> because she disagreed with me, and now I'm hanging out with this 80 year old comic book writer. <laughs> in a fucking Rorschach mask because I told him that Rorschach is reincarnated by Dr. Manhattan yeah. to protect us from the squids and I'm trying to take a fucking 800 yard shot from a sniper rifle from a scaffolding that we All made right. here in the middle of the fucking desert. Like what? I have a question. Yeah, <laughs> please. About the reincarnation thing. So yeah. th th does she believe that or is she just selling that because- Right, is that the story she, she sells them because she's trying guy. to make them- in, Well, because she's like, oh, maybe- The it, big guy, right. right? And then like- He wasn't. Well, then he went to jail. So, oh, I guess it wasn't ever him yeah. or- Or he Rorschach's jumped out spirit of her. jumped out of him think, and went I, to somebody else. I don't think like, she jumped out. He didn't out. die. Yeah, no, I think that she believes I was just wrong. Ah, oh, that, wasn't, that wasn't the true Rorschach. That this wasn't guy, this one, you must yeah. be the Rorschach. I mean, that's that's goalpost moving. That's yeah. what uh, that's what that kind of mentality would do. Yeah. But also, there's all there's another element here. But I think her her breaking down and saying I think there's something wrong with me mm. is dispelling the the other theory, which is that like she's manipulating all of them. Ah, uh, right. She's like, okay, well, he fucked up. He got arrested. Next. Right. It's not that conscious. No. Yeah. No. She's no. like she's deranged. just that effective, mm. and I think it's because she's young and she believes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, she she sell, she tells Will Myers, I'm like, I heard that Turley has the comedian's button, mm -hmm. like, as this huge thing over his desk, mm -hmm. like he wants to honor him. R what does that say about Turley? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 Will Myers says, it's decoration. It says whatever you want it to say. <laughs> uh, but they it's have art, the, man. There's, you know, yeah. well, what you do know. you see in it? Right. What do you see? Or what does he see in it? Maybe he's saying the, the fucking smiley faces that in and of itself is a Rorschach test. Yeah, he's got nothing to do with the comedian. Maybe he just likes the smiley face. Yeah, no, but it does. Because <laughs> he worships that fucking <laughs> yeah. guy. But uh, so does now- he, Does he like openly talk about how much he loves the comedian like on the campaign trail? Doesn't show that. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just yeah. like, I want everyone to have a nice day. Although, I mean, you know, the, you know, the government did send the comedian to New York yeah, to quell comedian, race riots. So like yeah, he, was he was a public a figure. Yeah. Oh no, that's right. And 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 Turley says, like, God help me, like, I'm almost glad he's dead because he'd be working for Redford and then they would have got me. Mm. Like he's right. he was good. Yeah. Like he would have shot me. <laughs> so like they would have made him work against me. So yeah. Uh, so we have um the detective at their house. Because of course like they didn't have any next it's just sitting there. Yeah. So he gets to go through it. Yeah, this is the <laughs> compound. Yeah. Yeah, he's not literally hearing their conversation, but no. he's like he's taking he's in the, the, what he sees and we're seeing their conversation exactly. in these Following spaces that he's Following them through in. it, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, like he sees, like there's a gap between the wall and the carpet. He pulls up the carpet, he finds this huge blood stain on the ground, mm. which in and of itself could be a Rorschach test. Oh, what didn't you want someone to see? Like, what did you put a carpet here? You know, because it doesn't match. Right. So yeah, and they, the blood. they yeah. killed someone here. This is probably where Laura got that bullet wound. Mm. Um, of course, look when she's talking to him, she holds the bullet wound. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, yeah, this this, and then she he looks across the, the wall. He sees a hole in a Will Myerson sketch that he did for Laura that they put up. Mm. Looks behind it. There's a bullet hole. And then it's like, okay. Oh, they put the they put the sketch up to block the to bullet. To block? No, because there's a hole in his. Is that a hole? Or is that just a? That's. I mean, like, the it citizen. It looks like a hole to me. I think it's a hole. Okay. Because no, the citizen has put no a hole in the mask, so he could eat hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, so somebody got killed here. Somebody got shot here. There's no place here to dig. There's no, you know, there's no. There, 
where do you get rid of a body here? He eventually finds the septic tank. I mean, it's oh. the Midwest. You just yeah. leave it outside. <laughs> the coyotes will take it. But uh, he pulls out the body from Ugh. the septic tank. Ugh. God. And, uh, you know, the kids sit next to him because she's not trying to help him solve the mystery. Right. You know, she's like, maybe we didn't put a carpet there. Maybe not. Like, where, you know, it's a big desert. Maybe they dragged him out into the middle of the woods. Maybe the vultures got him. Hey, maybe a body just fell in our septic tank. Yeah. yeah who knows? Well, now she's like, well, you did you check the pockets? He goes, yep. She goes, we did that already. We checked him. He goes, yeah, but you didn't check his jet. You didn't check his coat pocket. And he finds a beeper. Hmm. A beeper? Yeah. So he checks the pager, says, call this number. He calls the number. And she, I love it. She goes, is this the smartest movie? He goes, shh, it's ringing. <laughs> this is a campaign office for the re-election of Robert Redford. Oh. Hmm. Huh. Click. He just found a tie to Redford. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> they killed someone who was working for the office. Of Redford. Of Redford. Red, yeah. yeah. And someone working for the office of Redford was in the building with them. Yes. Like it was in this building and they killed him. With him they were me yeah, or something. And then they show Rorschach get off the phone and talk to Laura and she's like, so? Like he wants to meet here. I don't get it. Is that good or bad? And he says, Herm. Huh. He, he's bringing the convention badges that you would need in order to get into oh, the shit. election. Like easier to meet in person than sending by mails to risky, he says. And she says, I don't like this. Like he'll see who we are. And he's like, we can't do it without the badges. Redford can't win without what we're going to do. Hmm. Redford wants us to win. So you're like, oh shit. So they, Redford did hire them or work with them. Exactly. Jesus, okay. So uh, the detective brings the pager to his contact if the, with the Turley campaign. He says, what does the FBI have got? And he's just like, uh, they tur I turn over the body. They have no idea like who he is. They're still working it out. Hmm. But, they did uh, say he stank, though. Right, but <laughs> exactly. So then they start putting things together. He's like, well, we know Will Myerson and Cummings were in contact with Miller. We, we, we you know, interrogated him. We know that Miller reached out to a cop friend on Myerson's behalf to get the badges they need to get into the convention center. Uh, Frank told his contacts that uh, they were working on an experiment uh, for a story. A new comic book about the Dark Fife. Okay. He wanted to know, like you know, like uh, let's say that like someone's running for president, and uh, they we well, I wanted to shoot him at a at a, at a campaign rally. Like what what would I need in order to get into that thing? So Miller got all the information he needed about how to get in and what to do. Okay. Huh. So then they get a list of names, they track them down, they set them up. No, they, I'm writing it for a school paper. It's totally fine. Yeah. Hmm. So they get well, they get a list of names, and then there's Jonathan Oates, who lived on the water, couldn't get him on the phone. He's missing. He loved the Pfeiffer, though. He was a Pfeiffer lifer. Well, and then they... <laughs> they see a picture of him in his house, and it's like, match the body. Yeah, looks just like the Yeah, body. this is the guy. Our missing guy is Jonathan Oates. How long ago did this guy die? Not long. Like weeks, maybe yeah, days. Her wound hadn't healed that much. Her wound hadn't healed that much. And it's only been a few days And they since got she the died. badges. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then the detective goes over Oates' apartment or house, whatever, and like <laughs> looks through things, looks through his files, uh, and, and finds a check from the Redford campaign for about 40 grand. Oh. His contact's yeah. like, oh shit. You, you never pay with a check. No. <laughs> no, Jesus. No. He says, but I didn't find anything that linked him to Meyerson or Cummings. Right. Except so, the fact that he was at his body is at their place. Exactly. So he looks through everything. He, f he eventually discovers a safe. He's mm -hmm. like, there we go. Cracks open the safe, safe and he finds- Oh, he's a safe cracker? He is a safe cracker. Yeah, well, he's a PI. Yeah. Useful skill. Exactly. But he, he gets in the safe, he finds a bunch of cash, a gun, and a beer. A beer? Yep. Who puts a beer in a safe? My emergency beer. <laughs> it's just, but it's an empty glass. It's an empty glass bottle. So he takes his he takes his napkin. Okay, or, that's the same beer that Turley was drinking. Yes, it is. He takes the uh, like a like a cloth. He grabs the beer bottle from his files. Oates served in the military. Uh, in two thousand one, he was present at the capture of Osama bin Laden. <laughs> uh, okay. He was also awarded a special honor by Redford. He also had a like assistant slash secretary. We discovered this the body of this woman named Diane Condor who worked with Oates. And she was an ideal tenant, nice person, no reason to suspect she'd kill herself or that she would do anything to 
hurts Turley or anything, but, uh, you know, dead all the same. <laughs> and uh, so he, uh, he pours a beer for himself and for his contact from the Turley campaign. Dude grabs the glass. Oates was contacted by Miller. He's getting more information about, like, about a story that he's writing about assassinating a presidential candidate or whatever, and where he'd have to, where he'd have to be, what the blind spots were, if he, how, how he'd get a kill shot, that kind of thing. Oates is more than happy to provide that information. Diane found that sus. It, She's yeah. like, nah. <laughs> uh, You're writing a story, right? right. It's, it, and it, it's yeah. pretty easy, you just make a spot. Mm -hmm. And what they need you're to get the in. Yeah, what they need to get in, like some campaign uh, credentials, some, mm -hmm. uh, some, some VIP passes. You know, VIP passes, you know, that, that had to go through rigorous scrutiny right. to get through. So you, you don't have to, we don't, we're not gonna frisk you, we're not gonna check you, we see right. the, the pass. That, you had to go through security to get there and we show yeah. how Laura and Will got through in the first place. Right. Yeah, but but VIP passes are correspondingly harder to get for that reason because right. they are like normally vetted. But it wouldn't so be hard for get Oates one? to get one because oh. Oates worked personal security for Redford. I see. So, yeah. So Oates he's just fully in on these it. people. He, he, well, he's not just telling them like how you would. He's like, I'm also going to get you. Yeah. <laughs> the passes themselves. Right. All right. Okay. He's laying it all out. Like mm -hmm. this guy worked for the for the for Redford. He, he got the access, this is how they got in the room. They, this is how they knew where to be in the first place, how they knew how to get the shot, how they knew how, they, they knew how close they could come and how successful they could be. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he got the, the badges, that's when the secretary complained. Yeah, she's like, okay. She's like, no! <laughs> You're actually getting people in. Yes. That's too, too far. Because he works for Redford, but like, they need to get into the Turley campaign. Right. Yeah. But, he knew that Turley's people would grant Redford's people passes because they're all colleagues. Like they all work right. together. Like they know each other. Sure. Yeah. yeah, of course. Get a couple of VIP badges for the Redford people. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're running with the other guy, like we all run in the same circle. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, why don't you come see how a real campaign's run, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. come on. So then, that's like lawyers meeting for drinks at a bar. Right? After the matter if it's the prosecutor yeah. or the defender. Yeah, yeah, you're all the same people. Yeah, yeah you're all uh, scum. <laughs> Uh, the contact There's something like, perverse about that. That's right, yeah, no. You should fraternize with, with the enemy. Yeah. That's right. The, the, but the, the contact goes, holy shit. And he's like, what? What are you telling me? And he goes, my office would have had to provide those VIP patches. Like, mm. I'm on the hook for that. Ooh. Like, if, if Redford requested them, he's the president of the United States. Of course we're giving it to him. Right. Like, we would never have denied it. Right. So Oates decides to deliver them himself. Okay. He sets things up with Meyerson and Laura. He brings his gun with him because he's not an idiot. I mean, he's a secret service man. Yeah, of course. He's Drove right. himself across the country to get there. Diane, like his secretary, is like, if Reverend knew why you wanted to do that, you'd be giving two badges to murderers to kill Turley's campaign. Mm -hmm. And Oates is like, I talked to Bob. This is the kind of story he'd always want to read. <laughs> like, he would approve of this. He would approve of this. Yeah. Well, no, I talked to Bob. He, he right. was a movie like, man. Yeah. I told him this story. Right. And, and he like, approved yes. of this story. Go ahead. Oh, that's a good with story. That story. Wait. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. And then she never saw him again. So she's watching the campaign on TV. She's watching the campaign the rally, rally on TV. Yeah. And she can't hold it in. So she immediately is like, this. I haven't heard from him. Like something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. So yeah. she goes to the campaign. And she oh. knows that there's an emergency contact number on the VIP badges that you should call to alert anyone of anything suspicious. So she does. Oh. And that's the call that came to the detective's contact in the Charlie campaign. In the beginning when he's like, when yeah. he gets the crank call, yeah. that's from her. That's he's from like, her. oh shit, that was the contact. Like that was the call I got. Then she knew after that, when the news broke, there's no way they're gonna believe me. That I just didn't know. Right. Until the last possible right. second. They're gonna come they're gonna assume it was me. They're gonna so, trace the call yep. or whatever. Yeah. So she killed herself. Wow. And he's like, Yeah, but like why did they shoot Oates? Why did Oates shoot Laura? Right. Like what that happened doesn't, at that the That doesn't fit. And it's kinda of like, who cares? And he's like, Yeah, well, I don't know. They had a fight or they had an argument about something. Right. And they he's like, But hand. isn't that why I'm here? Mm. So he goes, Look, dude. Like, you just solved it. You solved it. You're good. You are good. I gotta make some calls. Like, I think it's best if, uh, I think it's best if you tell Turley yourself about all of this. Because mm. I also kind of fucked up. Right. <laughs> but you tell him this, you, you nailed it. 
Right. Like, okay. You and I am going to leave. The Redford had you, had, like, had was, tried someone. to have you assassinated. Yeah. He leaves. He just leaves him there. Yeah. He's got to go. The detective takes out a uh, his his cloth, and he picks up the bottle that, oh. that the guy oh, that the guy did, was drinking. Yeah, and looks at the fingerprint, the thumbprint. Because mm. he's now he's like something, something, something's not up right here. Well, like also like oh, thank you for figuring this out. Dude, I gotta go. You know what? You report to Charlie. I'm gonna yeah. leave. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no. sus. Well, like his bottle, like that's the same beer that was yeah, in Charlie's office, but was... it's also the same beer that's in Oates's safe. Yeah. Right. He's sitting on the edge of his of his hotel bed. He goes, "You don't know anything about me," and, uh, and Laura goes, "What more do you need to know?" He goes, "Fuck you!" He no. throws the bottle at her. She's like, "The prints matched, right? They matched to your contact at the Charlie campaign, Alan. Like they damn it matched." He's like, "Yeah, Oates and Alan. Like Oates knew Alan." So it wasn't Redford. No, that was it behind was Turley. It. it was Turley's own people. People. Yeah. Turley's people sent them to assassinate him to implicate Redford yep. in a plot. Yep. Uh, and they knew they were coming. Yep. Yeah, they, they set those people up they to They set kill everyone them. up yep. to Oates. Yep. He was Oates's contact. After we reached out to Oates, he didn't reach out to Redford. He reached out to Turley's people saying two crazy people wanted to kill Turley. Right. <laughs> and they were like, oh yeah, no, that's great. Go do that. Right. Yeah. Like set that up. Because hmm. we'll stop him. And we'll implicate the president. Right. Well, no, Turley gets the idea. He's like, I can't win. Right. With the approval rating in Vietnam, there's no way I can win. But if I implicate Redford as like a crazy person who tried to have the competition murdered, then I get a better shot. Right. So was Oates in on it? Or was Oates just doing what the Turley campaign told him to do, but didn't really yeah. care? Like, what was he? Was he like part of the plot? intentionally yeah. to like trick everyone or was he like oh the Shirley campaign wants me to like let these like wackos like move forward with their plan maybe yeah. they're trying to like entrap no. them or no, something you know what happens you know why we saw those people like taking those shots why to show that Laura can make the shot so they put Oates through the same thing and he sees oh shit these people actually can do oh. it oh so he starts to get worried, like, oh, this isn't like... This is not going to be like a plot where we're going to immediately stop these two. Like, right. they're going... They could kill him. Mm. So I need to stop them. And that's why he gets shot. Yes. Oh, okay. So he pulls his gun, and he doesn't expect her to be better. Right. Damn. He did shoot her. He did shoot her. But, but, but it was not a she, kill she shot. Killed she killed him. She killed him. Yeah. Yeah. The collector, who is... Hero obsessed. He loves Meyerson's work, especially citizen stuff. Meyerson, in, like, includes the collector and is like, "If you send off the prints of Kovacs, I'll leave you a whole bunch of original citizen art. It's <laughs> worth thousands and thousands of dollars. That'll be like your payoff." Oh, so the prints didn't really match. No. So the collector did send them off as a as a. As like a payoff. Well, yeah, it was well, a, to throw them off the scent. Yes. Well, or to implicate or to send Rorschach. Like a signal yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so this whole montage, she's he's figured out that like she wanted somebody to, to find it to unravel it. Yes. So the so putting having it look like it was Rorschach's prints would like would make put it the would... seed in his mind that like something something is going on. Yeah, here. exactly. As opposed to two two nutballs trying to kill a presidential hopeful. Right. That's the end of it. Right. No, Rorschach's. Fingerprints make it a mystery. Right. Like a deeper mystery. Exactly. And then there's other things, too, that don't make sense. Like, she mentions the pager, or he mentions, like, the pager was way too obvious. Like, why would Oates allow a number that could be so easily traced to, to like, the Red appear Redford campaign on his page? Appear, yeah, no, like, that's all planted. That was like, no, she planted that so that he would find it and, yes. like, start to unravel the mystery. Right. And Jacobs recognizes them in the, in the convention floor. Like earlier, mm -hmm. you know, he calls Alan. Alan takes the call. The call isn't like, "Hey, there's these two people that are trying to kill the president." Blah blah, blah or the the you know Turley. Right. It's just they're here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like it's happening exactly how we planned it. Yes. Yeah. And maybe that secretary didn't kill herself. Maybe Alan killed the secretary. Right. Okay, I was thinking that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because like. No, that's how you get rid of someone. You yep. make it look like a suicide. Yep. Yeah. 
And uh, she and tried to stop it. Right. Why would she kill herself afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. It was a flimsy. It's a flimsy. It, it, yeah. It, you like can I was buy so scared it, they'll come sucks. after me. But right. Yeah. It's, yeah. He's got the beer in his hand, and she says, "Hey, can I have a sip?" And he goes, "You can finish it." <laughs> and she says, "Thanks." And he takes off his like shirt, and he says, "I see you." And she goes, "Good. You're supposed to see us." And he goes, "No, I'm not going to do it." And she goes, "Sure, you will." Hmm. We were right, and you know it now. <laughs> so wait a minute. <laughs> this is her in his mind telling him that like the squid thing is fucking real, that and he's he like, is... "Yeah, yeah, maybe it is real." She, from like his own detective style, like his his imagined version of her, is so effective. She convinces him he's Rorschach. Oh my god! Like. I have to kill I have Turley. To finish what they started. Yes, this because is Turley is that for. crazy. Well, because Turley like tricked the world into believing that he was like going to be assassinated. Yeah, so, so that like, he would win. Well, so and, that he would and win. And that man can't be president. And is that is that the detective's theory, or did the detective go nuts by following too closely right. to Laura and Will? And he's just and into he's just there. he's like I hear it too in the tape. Right. He doesn't, but like right. you know, he's like we have to kill him. Right. And then he goes, he like descends, where it's just like Will Myerson's talking to him from across his drawing table, and you know, Laura's like, Turley's part of the squid plot. Oh no. And then. And he's like, no, well, no, you're crazy. No, and Myerson's like, huh? like drawings are coming to life, and the citizen is giving him his like, this is your job as a citizen is to stop this. Uh huh. You know. Like, yeah, Turley's a monster. He can't win. Yeah, well, and then Laura talks about like this, the heroes, right? And how they left. And she's like, there are a few, ex there's only a few possibilities of what happened. One, the heroes abandoned us. <laughs> or two, they are reincarnated in us and we are able to save the world. Between the two, I guess I'd pick the second one. And it's right. like, yeah, but it's more comforting. But it is the first one, though. They, they, <laughs> they, they left. They, they, they left they and fucked stop. each other. Like, yeah. no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one of them went to, literally went to Mars. Yeah. He left the planet. He left the planet and then went to the DC Universe. Or he went elsewhere. That's true. He went even farther. Yeah. No, he definitely just went to Mars. What What do you want to believe? Right. Believe the thing. Maybe you should just believe the thing that's more comforting. Exactly. Which is that, like, there's a plan. Right. And, and of course, the de that's when you realize, like, oh, or maybe you did earlier, the detective doesn't have a name because he himself is a Rorschach. Mm. You project whoever you want onto him. And he then becomes, like, the Rorschach. Right. But he's also not... He's not so gone he's gonna wear a fucking Rorschach costume. Ah. It's like, I'll, I'll do your bidding, but I ain't putting on the fucking well, mask. Well, he's like, That's it stupid. won't work. So mm. he has to go meet with Turley. And you can oh, see, right. like, he's. If I put on a friggin' mask, Turley gonna... will be like, what the fuck? You're wearing a creepy mask. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Would you yeah. rather I dress like a comedian <laughs> right. so you can blow me? <laughs> the detective now changed. You know, he takes off his clothes, symbolizing rebirth. He's a new person. Uh, you see on this face, he's he's got a blank, expressionless look on his face. It's Much just... like the original Rorschach did at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, just, you could put any expression on there. Some. LA person talks about the difference between LA and, and New York and how much like more lively it is here and blah 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 right. and the detective's response is Herm. <laughs> so the question here is and maybe it's going to be answered yeah. is it, did she really leave a trail of breadcrumbs for some would-be detective or did to he like just unravel see, it? He's a really good detective but he's also susceptible to insanity yeah. and he saw so them oh, as breadcrumbs. She must have, she's that, I mean, she's that is her, me. right? Because she is that effective. She convinces a right. strong man to murder. She convinces a, a, an aging comic book writer to become what he is. Yeah. And then convinces from beyond the grave yeah, a detective. Yeah, not even trying to. She doesn't even know him. She she's, know, met him. she's not even doing it. Yeah. But like the memory her, of her, yeah. his projection of her is making her effectively change him into Rorschach. Well, in the letters, too. Yeah. Yeah, he's like reading her inner thoughts. Oh, so yeah. Like, yeah, he's getting the whole influence. Exactly. Well, yeah. She left these for me. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, so... Mm. Okay. So the detective meets with Jacobs. We do this whole scene where he meets with uh, Turley again. Uh-huh. He's like, what's this? He's holding a tape recorder. Remember how he didn't want to be recorded before? I'm yeah. Just, I'm bringing these in now. No, but like, Alan vouched for him because Alan's like, oh, no. He, he buys it. Mm -hmm. We got him. And that tape recorder has Diane's confession, supposedly. Right. And the link to Redford. And he's like, trust me, he's going to want to hear this. <laughs> I want to hear it first. Play it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he's like, we're going to play for Turley and we're going to play for the world. Mm. 
And Jacob's is, and Jacob's of course is in on it. Right. So he's like, well, well, look at you. You figured it all out. <laughs> and so he says, you know, we good here? And he goes, oh yeah, no, you're fantastic. Go right in. So the detective goes in. Alan's there. Turley's like going over some stuff. He goes, well, what are you looking at? It's just some bullshit. <laughs> we sit down. The detective goes, is there anything to drink? The Alan office gets some water. He goes, are we drinking? It feels like the occasion. And Turley's like, why don't you go get some beers out of the fridge, Alan? <laughs> Detective says he's it's warm. He's taking his coat off. He sits down. The Redford people, or people associated with that campaign, possibly including the president, found a pair to use them like a gun to kill you. He goes, well, holy shit. I mean, I knew that already, obviously. Right, right. But like, to hear it is another matter, you know? And he goes, what's on the tape? And he goes, well, like I said, it's a confession. And he goes, well, let's hear it. And he goes, I should say the sound isn't great. And... And over the tape, you hear a crash and slashing and a gurgle. Huh. And that's that. Uh. <laughs> the detective used the beer bottles to slaughter both Alan and Turley. <laughs> wow. The tape is playing nice and loud. Yeah. You know? <laughs> loud enough, hopefully, to cover from Jacobson. <laughs> and it's just a bunch of, bunch of fucking bullshit. You know, it's just Turley's... Bullshit. Mm -hmm. He grabs his coat, which he left on the hangar, covers himself, which he knew he would be covered in blood, <laughs> seals it back up, walks out. Jacobson's like, that was quick. Or Jacobs, like, Jacobs is like, that was quick. And he's like, you know him, once he has the answers, he doesn't need much more. <laughs> he goes, hey, wait a minute, where's Alan? And he goes, oh, they said they wanted to practice one of those speeches. You can hear him like giving the speech in the other room. <laughs> and he's like, that's why Alan kicked me out. He said, Surly's really, Surly's really sensitive about people hearing him practice. Jacobs hears in the room, he hears Turley, like, giving one of his fucking campaign speeches, and he's like, uh -huh. okay. So then uh, the detective leaves, drives to the movies, goes <laughs> to see Pontius Pirate. <laughs> the guy's like, oh, the movie it has started. To be Pontius Pirate. I gotta see it. But he goes, listen, it started 35 minutes ago. You're gonna, you're gonna miss all the best start. He goes, no, I, I can't wait till tomorrow. I have to see it right now. Uh -huh. So he gets his oh, popcorn, <laughs> gets his popcorn, passes Tom King and uh, uh, Jorge Fornes. <laughs> the way nice. in. That's cool. Yep. Then we see the Pontius Pirate movie playing before the detective, uh -huh. and he's like espousing about like what a badass he is and how it's like I'm a pirate, if, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm outnumbered. I'm, I'm still outnumbered, but I'll still beat you. Uh. Have at it, have at it then, you bastards! Come and fight, and if I die today, I die a pirate. And he like smiles. Hmm. Yeah, this is pretty good. <laughs> and then, then that's that. I'm still parsing the ending. Oh. But like, you know. Interesting. Why does Rorschach like this movie? <laughs> right. If it's drivel or if it's like an, mm. a, a, an interpretation of, of of Meyerson's, I mean, it's obviously him absorbing Meyerson's work, but it's also like reinterpreted through the lens of film, but we know Tom King likes movies, so obviously it can't be garbage. So, you know, what is it? I just assumed he was getting an alibi, being like, I, I was at the movies. I was at the movies. 35 minutes ago. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> Except, like, there's witnesses. <laughs> yeah, no, he's fucked. Oh, he's there's, fucked. There's witnesses? There's witnesses that say I killed a uh, presidential camp or a, a yeah, campaign candidate, candidate mm -hmm. presidential candidate, um, because I uncovered a plot yeah. by Robert Redford. Yeah. When Robert Redford didn't have a plot. Nope. Well. Yeah, how's he gonna explain all this, though? He's not! Like, I uh, I was the last one in the room with him. Yep. When I came out, when I went in, they were alive. Yeah, and, and I when came I, out. And they were all dead. Uh, and, and the next time anyone went in there, they were both dead. Yeah, like, that's what happened. Nobody cares about any plot or anything. It's like, well, you killed them. Yeah, you murdered them. You murdered them. Or he could just be like, blood. well, yeah. <laughs> maybe Alan killed him and killed himself after. I killed himself with a bottle? With a bottle? That takes a lot of force. That's fortitude. hardcore. And you left, what, you guys had your meeting. Yeah, you they left, and then they killed after themselves that. after yeah. that. Yeah, that's no. very convenient. Yeah, no, I think that this guy. Yeah, because screwed. I, I essentially laid it all in front street and be like, look, this is the actual plot. Right. They plan to kill. I to told, set it up. I told him I was going to unveil the plot and like, you know, it's up to you. I'll leave you this bottle. You know, do what you need to do with it. And right. I left, and they did what they had to do. They killed themselves. It was the only honorable way out. Right. I mean, there's no, there's no record. The thing is, there is no like recording device except for the tape. Right. Which I don't think he records themselves being murdered. It's a, I'm a little unclear as to what happens with the tape because the, the tape is just he, well, the tape he is just it. it's 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 an alibi like the tape is playing he doesn't 
Yeah, but it looks like he starts to. Uh, I guess he doesn't because it doesn't say click. He doesn't actually do anything with yeah, the Yeah, I guess not. Well, I mean, it is indented, isn't it? No, it's not. Like, this is what it's like before he presses it. And oh then, yeah, look at that. So it, he never actually does anything. They're like, "What are you doing? Is it playing? What's it?" What? Oh, that's right. So he it never have to be presses it here. Yeah. It's not playing. It's not doing anything. And then he kills them. And the sounds you're hearing is his him killing them. Right. And then I after mean, he kills them, he's like, he click. And yeah. Plays he does them. leave a bloody thumbprint. And there is a on bloody thumbprint. So yeah. I, I guess that. it and that kind of clinches it. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that that's the he fingerprints. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, he's not trying to get away with it. No. No, he just wants to go see that movie. Yeah. He's like, maybe I, I shouldn't get away tonight. with it. I'm not going to be able to see it another night. Because right. I'm going to be murdered. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, like, it's interesting because, like, the right, like, it ends the way it should. Like, the conspirators are done away with. Yes. In the only way they probably could be because how are you going to, like, You're explain not gonna arrest this to, like, them, a yeah. jury or anything? Like, that this is this whole conspiracy. Uh -huh. uh, but, like, it's so fucked up yeah. because the guy thinks that he's, like, the reincarnation of Rorschach, or, or does he? Right, I think he does because he's because he sees Laura. Yeah. He sees Laura and he's like, and I have to kill Turley. Yeah, like he he has a whole argument with them <laughs> where he's like falling, and eventually I guess like the that like resting crazy face that he has is like his like he's been. It's like the detective's dead and Rorschach has taken over. And he's I like mean, puppeteering his body. You can say that, or it's just like. Are we doing this? Am yeah. I doing it? All right, I gotta kill the president. Right, or well, the candidate. Well, the candidate for the president. Yeah, I, I gotta do this. Fine. Yeah, I mean the fact that he smiles when he sees the movie is like, oh, I guess he's not completely gone. But like, what? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's interesting. I'd love to get into that. So Laura is she is raised with the belief that Turley is good for America. Yeah, I think so. And then she reads the Citizen books, and she's like. And, and she starts to change. Yeah, she's like, maybe he's not. Right. Or maybe he's well, a squid. No, I don't think she even thinks about it. The thing is, she, I don't, I, I, there's no reference to Turley either before or since until she hears his name on the tape. So it could be that, like, she doesn't even think twice about Turley. But when she hears the tape, it's like it manifests the concept of this is all culminating to killing Turley. Mm hmm. I, mean, I don't know. But why does she go to there? Like, why is she like, why, why, why him? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or is it the fact that she's like, no, we have to set it up and make it look like we're going to kill Turley. We have to get killed and caught. No, caught. I don't know. No, she plans on surviving. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, she, she's like, no. She says like, I, I have to kill him. Like that's what the that's what the voice said. Yeah. Yeah. She's she. So yeah. It's like, but why though? Like, why does she hear that? <laughs> you know right. why not anything else? Because it's not like it's saying that. I, I think because it's just it's the biggest possible thing you can do. Well, she could kill Robert Redford. Yeah, but that Redford. doesn't line up with what Meyerson believes. Right. With so what the Citizen comics would that's say. That's the thing. Like she's becoming more influenced by the Citizen comic. Yeah. And like that, like incepts her into like, right. deciding to kill Turley, who she would have otherwise supported. Yeah. Based on her upbringing. Right. Yeah, I think she even says like something to that point where she's like, I can't believe I'm going to kill Turley. Like, right. that's that's so, you know, against what I believe. Yeah, but I heard it on the tape. Right, and it's, it's like, like, yeah, but Did it's... you hear it on the tape or did you read it in The Citizen? Yeah, that's it. It's, I think that's what it is. <laughs> I think it's like, yeah. I can't, like, you say one thing, but you're thinking another. Like, yeah. my, 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 my ideals have changed. But again, like, you know, any, any sane person would not necessarily jump to murdering a person to prove your ideals. You know, <laughs> hopefully, a comic book doesn't drive you to do that. Right. Uh, it's just more like that's, but that's the idea that we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. And it's I, not just. I think just if that... you are going to already kill that person, it doesn't matter what you're reading. You, you will find some meaning in it that that's, just proves it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that's that's true in real life. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, it's also for her. It's the same as it was for her father. It's the like conflict of like. I thought I believed this one thing, yeah. and now I'm seeing this other way. thing, which is like creating this like this conflict. Yeah, and so I the only way for me to deal with it is to like, oh, it's squid aliens. It's squid, squid aliens, aliens are, you know, giving yeah. me this command. But she doesn't think. I don't think she thinks. No, no, no. Well, no, she thinks she that she thinks it's Mo Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, she thinks it's Doctor Manhattan. He thought it was squid aliens in his head. Right. He jumped to that like magical conclusion right. as to like. Well, it Why is just Manhattan versus way. squids, right? Because it's yeah. Manhattan is the good and the squids are the bad, and you know we got to fight the squids, and you know <laughs> so. But the squids are also telepathic because they were, because yeah. at least the one was. Yeah. Uh, but 
Yeah. Yeah, she comes to a different insane conclusion. Right. Well, the other did. side, the Myerson yeah. conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, that the superheroes are still out there somewhere. Yes. Yep. Yeah. To fight yeah, there's hope. Yeah. And one of them is. Yeah. Yeah. And that one has the ability to kind of do well, that. And he ain't no superhero. Like, he ain't <laughs> coming back to help you. Yeah. It's, it's so twisted that, like, She's like, right? Like, Turley is evil? Right, right. <laughs> because of, like, this whole thing that he sets up? Yeah. But, like, that's so fucked up. But and it's I... also, like, it's it's Inception. Like, Turley, I think, thinks he's right. Well, like, yeah. Turley like, Redford's it... been elected five times. Now, that's not right. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's because of his influence from the comedian and his upbringing. Right. Like, yeah. he is, like, morally compromised so early on, but he's, like... He thinks he's the right man for the job. And yeah. I think he does think that Redford is trying to get him. You think but so? I think there's or do you a think part that was like an act where he was like, no, I don't, I'm going to play eh, the part of like crazy. It could go either way. It yeah. could go either way. It could yeah. be that it like he, it's, it's, it's yeah. bullshit. Then he's like, he's just a phony. Yeah. Uh, or it could be that like, he's like, no, I, I know it's true so much. I need to make it true. <laughs> Right, right. I just gotta like, show you. If I don't, like, set him up for a fall, he will try to kill me. Right. <laughs> but he would have already done that. Yeah. <laughs> if you believe that so much, yeah. then no matter what you do, he's still gonna kill you. I mean, yeah, the fact like, that he when, has the when you pull off this caper and you're winning the polls after everyone thinks he's, like, trying um, to assassinate yeah. you, then he will assassinate you so that he wins. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he has, but, No, like, I'll be untouchable then. I'll have guards all around exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah. Or, oh, or, oh my God, this is the best part. So Robert Redford is so powerful, it is gonna get Turley. He sets up the fact that Turley is gonna uh, like set up his own assassination yeah. and get stopped so that a detective finds it and kills Turley for it. There we go. No, okay, it, so it was, a was the it was Redford. It was a Redford plot. In this book that Redford somehow set this all up. <laughs> there's no I, moment in that book no, where that happened. I don't know, we could try to find we it. We could, maybe there's a fingerprint somewhere in here. <laughs> or, or an obscure comic book creator with another name. <laughs> I mean, the fact that, like, the comedian's button is over Turley suggests that Turley is a cynic who believes that, like, everything is a fucking joke. Yeah. Like, the, or, mm -hmm. but also, like, there, there no, could... That no, that suggests also, that the ends justify the means. I, I think it's, like, in the terms of this, like, the comedian had the button ironically, but yes. I think Turley believes it. Like, Turley thinks the comedian's a superhero. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it's like, no, that's... Yeah, I don't think that Turley is, like... Yeah, me and the comedian understand that like the world is cynical and bullshit, and so like fuck everything. Let's just be Machiavellian. I, I think it's like no, that's what happens when you get a disciple of the comedian. He's like, he's so dope. Look at this cool fucking button thing I've got over my table. Like, that's I, right. I think it's yeah. That's it's what not happens. even really an ideology. It's just like it's just creepy hero worship of like a psychopath. Yes, and that's I and oh, and, and then you go further where it's like that's. That's pop culture to some degree, right. where it's like you know you worship well, these you heroes. Like yeah, you 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 think you like Superman, but you also like want to see him murder people, or like you yeah. you think Spider Man's awesome, and then you like you you openly harass human beings for like not writing it the way you want to. Like that's not that ain't that ain't like part of the the, the deal of being a fan of these characters. Like yeah. you like them, then you must you know you must like their ideals, and their ideals are selflessness and heroism, and not like. You know, but no, no, I actually just like the idea of like the fact that an icon that has so much recognition is also part of me and that I can yeah. claim authorship over well, it. Well, you know what the smiley face is? It's the friggin' Punisher logo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, right? Like something where it's like Punisher would. Oh, it's so fucking dope. Punisher and cool. thinks you're an idiot, but like he's not a real person, so he can't say that. Yeah. Because, like, Jerry Conway created The Punisher, and he has said that out loud. Yeah. And it's like, that's not... And, and it didn't work. <laughs> so, like, nothing will. You know, the squid people are out there, and they're trying to... And they're making me a jerk. So, there, there, there's a lot to like, and yeah. there's a lot to get out of this, despite the fact that it is, like, a soulless ripoff of an Alan Moore property, and so everyone involved should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you can also, like, pour <laughs> over this, like... That's yeah. thanks to, no, you can you can just you can go through it and uh, again and again and again and get something kind different of like out of it. Watchmen. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh oh. There's a moment in here that uh, King pointed out that I think is hilarious. Um, this is presumably the first appearance of Pontius Pirate yep. in, a, in <laughs> Astonishing Suspense number fifteen. Whee! <laughs> he deliberately suspense. He deliberately recreated it where like you know. <laughs> Okay, so the original cover is like, though the world may mock uh, Peter Parker, a timid teenager, though the seven seas may mock Davy Darren, the bashful <laughs> boatswain, uh, they will soon wonder at the amazing valor of Pontius Pirate. It's the exact same thing. 
but he also put in like the caption boxes. It's like also in this issue, an important letter to you from the editor about the new astonishing. Like he put all the stuff in here that came from the original comic book and editorial. Like the editors of the book were like, oh, they changed it. Cause like, well, that's it. That's grammatically incorrect. Like this isn't, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. And he's like, no, 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 that's what Stan wrote. That's the funny part. It's wrong. <laughs> Come on, let's poke fun at Marvel. Yeah, wrote it wrong. You should love this. Right. Well, <laughs> well it's just like the it's editor's like, like it's I be historically accurate. Yeah, I didn't get the reference. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. I fixed it. Yeah, I fixed it. It's like, I know. I know, man. I know. It's 1961, yeah, man. You don't get the reference? He's Stan Lee, Look man. at the cover, yeah. man. Yeah. You work in the comic book like, No, I got the image, but like, I didn't know about like, the caption. I'm a copy editor, stuff. man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what do you want from me, dude? I just like, do grammar and punctuation. Yeah. I read the <laughs> script. There are no pictures in this. <laughs> that's true, yeah. I just fixed a paragraph. Well, that's wrong. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I'm a copy editor, dude. I'm, I'm not a fucking comic book writer. Give me, like, leave me alone. I, I saw like two Marvel movies, you know, <laughs> Iron Man and I don't know, the one with the with the one with the aliens in it. So, Rorschach. It's available in the comments if you want to go, buy a copy. I suggest you do if you were intrigued in any way, if you like these kind of mysteries. Uh, you know, we gave away the ending, unfortunately, but like, you know, it's the only way we make these shows happen. So, yeah. you know, but like, I think there's more to it. Again, like Ben said, like you can pour over yeah, it, and get something else out of it. Now that you know, I definitely you, want to read this. Well, now there's no tension. Now you can be like, oh, oh. Now you can just look for things. Yeah, you can just look. It's now like it's the same time you watch a movie. Exactly. Now it's like, where's Waldo? You can just look for all the fucking, <laughs> all, all, all the clues. <laughs> yeah, take that with you. You can, yeah. Because yeah. I got two. Because I was literally, I was telling Tiffany about it, and she's like, oh, great. Well, I'm never going to read it because Ethan's going to take it with him. And I was like, <laughs> well, that's okay. I got two copies. Hey, I finally brought back uh, S- uh, Mr. Up in Miracle. The sky. Did I bring back Mr. Miracle? No, Ben was going to read it. Oh, yeah, it. I have Mr. Miracle. Yeah. I did it. finish it, though. Yeah. I, mean, I would have brought it back. This ben a, wasn't gonna... That's a fucking Tom king because you took Up in the Sky, you took uh, Mr. Miracle, and now we got Rorschach. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, my God. I didn't realize they were all Tom King books. I know. I, I brought know. back Vision. Yes, you did. Yeah. Which is also Tom King. Tom! Yeah. <laughs> but we, they also borrowed Harleen. That's true. And that's Stay Ponche Hitch. And I also finished that. <laughs> What's that weird backwards talk, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Tiffany said it, and he was like, you're close. I'm like, no. Okay, that's the that's the hardest try. Now I'm going to say it like I'm in the fucking Black Lodge. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anyway, check it out. Pick it up. It's good. I mean, like, you can't deny... You know, you could... You, I mean, one could possibly be like, fuck that. They just said I'm a squid person. I don't like that at all. It's like, well, you know, maybe well, it'll incept Well, that. if the tentacle fits. <laughs> See you next week. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. It's pretty good. <laughs> right? Fits. Yeah, the tentacle fits. I'm you. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah, definitely. There's something in here. Oof.